So let's start this baby up. Where are we going to start it, Jim? Or well, we're going to start it from the most recent thing backwards. Kind of a little, a little uh, artistic flair to it. Because I'm sure you've seen the news stories. Like this Fox 9 article. It's totally legit. Nick Riccata, Minnesota lawyer and YouTuber facing drug charge, blames unknown man named Jim. Which is pretty fucking close based on that last live stream. Jesus. But I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read to you what's currently going on so we can go back in time and see how we got here. So, so sit down, chat. Get comfy. Uh, Daddy Jim's going to read you a news article from Fox. Minnesota-based lawyer and online legal analyst Nick Riccata is facing a drug charge in his home county. Riccata was arrested Thursday along with his wife and a fellow online personality. <laughs> that fellow online personality, by the way, ooh, is there a story to that one? Prosecutors filed charges against Riccata and his wife on Friday for second-degree possession, child endangerment, and a gross misdemeanor firearm charge. According to the charges, law enforcement attempted to execute a search warrant on May 23rd. At Riccata's home and, uh, well, I'll redact that. Trying to be trying to be a nice guy here. I know his shit's all over the internet, but I, I'll try to uh, abstain from listing locations. So, at his home. And was greeted by a girl at the front door who would not let them inside. After Riccata refused to provide the door code, law enforcement used a door ram to get inside and found Kayla, the third internet personality, and four juveniles inside the dwelling. Law enforcement proceeded to search the master bedroom and bathroom where they allegedly found a variety of drug paraphernalia, including three small baggies that tested positive for cocaine, eight green tablets that tested positive for ketamine, and a digital scale and several other items that tested positive, the charges claim. Authorities also found a Sig Sauer AR with several magazines and a loose ammunition under the bed, including a spent shell casing on the bedroom floor and located additional firearms and ammunition in the garage, according to the records. Police took Riccata and his wife into custody, and he told law enforcement that he and his wife stayed in the master bedroom where law enforcement claimed to find the most drug paraphernalia, but then refused to answer questions about the cocaine, according to court records. Before the arrest, some online users had raised concerns about Riccata's health, this week sharing a clip of him appearing to doze off during a stream. Law enforcement noted Riccata had several injuries to his arms at the time. They described the injuries as sores that are common with controlled substance users. Riccata, who owns a law firm based in his hometown, saw his online following skyrocket during the pandemic as he covered cases including Kyle Rittenhouse trial and Johnny Depp's lawsuit against Amber Heard. He has more than 150,000 followers on Twitter and nearly 450,000 subscribers on YouTube. Riccata and his wife are set to make their first court appearance on Friday morning. Oh, well, shit, it's Saturday, isn't it? Yes, that's come and gone, Chad. It's come and gone already. Ooh. Oh, well, how did it turn out, Jim? Oh, we're going to find out. Let's take a look at the mug shots. <laughs> oh, a couple of questions you might be asking yourself as we get into this story. We've already established Nick Riccata is a popular online internet personality. That's him in the middle. And I'm going to be honest with all of you, that is the exact face I would be making too. Do you know what that face conveys? Holy shit, everyone on the fucking internet is going to see this. That's what that fucking face says. Fucking hell, I'm going to be on uh, 4chan and 8chan and Kiwi Farms and Twitter and Reddit uh, the moment this is posted. He just know that's such a defeated look. That's, fuck me, there's no way I can get out of it. I can't hide anywhere. I can't reach. That's the look I would have. Just ass mad, platinum ass mad. That's the look. That's the fucking look he's wearing. It's almost like you can you can hear his thoughts inside his head right now. He's thinking, "Fuck you, Josh," because he hates Noel. <laughs> he's thinking, "Fuck you, Josh. This is your fault, Josh." I hate the Kino Casino. Now on his left, looking like a deer in headlights, is his wife. Uh, I'm guessing the drugs are working the way out of her system. I don't fucking know. We'll get into the charges later. Now, you might be confused. Wait a minute. If that's Nick with the black eye in the middle, and that's his wife who looks like she's coming out of the K-hole, who's the chick on the right? Who's the who's the blonde on the right? Well, that's a little bit of a side piece. That's a, that's a well, <laughs> soon-to-be formerly married woman. Her name's April. 
you could think of her as a living fuck toy. She's the little, uh, she's, she's a living flashlight. That's who that is. They kept her in a little cage. They kept her in a little cage. They brought her out. She did tricks. <laughs> she'd, do, she'd do tricks for people on occasion. So there they are, all together, in their mugshot. Nick pissed as hell because he knows that people are going to be looking at this mugshot. His wife coming out of the K-hole in April, wondering when her parents are going to pick her up because she's like 14 years younger than both of them. Am I going to get paid for that? Oh, my God. Ugh. Am I going to get paid for the work I did? Like, Mr. Ricky Rackets, the Rail King, um, you owe me, like, a 50 for the blower I gave you? And they're not, these, these guys in these blue outfits, they're taking my picture? Oh, fuck. My husband's going to see this, and it's going to be a problem. Could you maybe snap your fingers at your fucking wife and pull her into reality for a minute? Mr. Ricky Rackets, the Rail King? Because I need to get fucking paid. Because you got laid. That give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on here? A little bit of a a little bit of an inkling of what might be going on. We got a thruple situation. Ooh. A little bit of a thruple going on. <laughs> oh, what's that? Nick Nick has a response. Oh, I, I'm breaking news. Holy shit. Apparently, uh, Nick Ricada has a response to my stream right now that nearly eighteen thousand people are watching. Uh, he sent it via Twitter. Holy shit. Okay, what is it, Nick? What did you want to say? I love the cocaine. I love the cocaine. What? I love the cocaine. I love the cocaine. Oh, all right. I guess he loves the cocaine. Maybe that's maybe that's why he lost God, he lost the case again. Damn it, Nick. Oh, it can't keep happening. Why does everything we touch turn into shit? <laughs> Poor Vic Mignana. He's in a breadline now, Nick. What did we do? Oh, he's going to be voicing, he's going to be voicing used fucking McDonald's Happy Meals. Nick, we've destroyed this man. Oh, God, Nick, what do we do? And now the Monty thing and the Coke charges. Oh, sweet love and God. Why did I wear this fucking shirt? Oh, oh, the arrogance and the irony of it's overwhelming me. I'm going to puke. I'm going to vomit a little bit, Nick. Oh, God, sweet Christ. What have I done? <laughs> Made a little bit of a mistake, I think. I mean, it's a little mistake, maybe. So, how do we get here? We see that Nick's been arrested for drugs and weapon charges with his wife and his mistress for the world to see. What a predicament. But how do we get there? What was the real start of it? Well, let's back her up. Let's take a look at one of the theory-crafted ideas for why Nick Ricada is currently... Living in, <laughs> living in his own self-induced hell. I got to this anonymous letter or the anonymous package. It was postage not paid. Like I had to pay the postage on it to receive it. And it, the post office was like, well, where was it sent from? And it had my address as the return address with me as the sendee, which is not true. And it, in it, it had this burned piece of paper, which I, I feel like I'm going to get serial rape here. It says, the stars are aligned. A new host is chosen. Hail unto thee, Nick Chan Rikadachu. And then with that came this. And I, this was so weird because this came before the mention of Sonic in the trademark dispute uh, that we were talking about last night. A Sonichu <laughs> medallion. <laughs> has now, this crazy son of a bitch receives in the mail... It basically sigils from hell. The paper is marked with sigils. I'm sure it was from an X user trying to summon him a succubus, but they fucked it up because they're from X, of course. <laughs> and they sent him a cursed Sonichu medallion, and the crazy motherfucker puts it on. Um, been passed to me. I don't know where this came from. I don't know what it means other than what it means, but that is um, that happened. That happened. It cost me two dollars <laughs> to pay the postage on it. He actually paid for the privilege to be cursed. Think about that. That should have been the first warning sign that there was a drug problem. Because only a junkie would be so fucked in the head to pay for the privilege to receive a fucking voodoo curse. Dude, if if you need more guns, just let me know. I'll 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 right. send some. <laughs> this is friendly, I think. This is friendly. Oh, Bronca, I don't think he needs more guns based on that court reporting. 
Based on those police reports, Brock, I don't think he needs more guns, maybe less guns. Maybe instead of giving him more guns and ammunition, Brock, you could go collect them from his house so his kids don't trip on the shotguns. You know, with the spent shell casings. Because he's shooting at ceiling cats. Hey, Nick, I know you're a raging alcoholic with a coke problem. Would you like some more firearms for your house? <laughs> hey, it's me, your buddy Brocka. I've got these ARs. Hey, buddy, would you like some fucking ammunition for your massive fucking gun collection? Get the kids together and do a rail. And then show them gun safety, buddy. Yeah, no, I think he's good. I think he's good. He's been a sonnet you cursed. Oh, it's the demon. Now, initially, Chris, after uh, banging his mother repeatedly, went to prison. And then the spirit inhabiting him, this is the back lore of the sonnet you curse of Magichan, went into Ethan Ralph. If you remember, Ethan Ralph was on the scene and got closest to Chris. Yep, Jesse from Pot Awful, other people were there. But Ralph dressed as Chris Jan and came into contact with Chris, allowing for the possession to take his body over. And within two years, remember that timetable, within two years, Ralph had lost a relationship with both his children from two different women, had his wife flee him, lost all his money, had to flee the United States, became a poverty junkie in Mexico, living off tortas and fighting street dogs so he can get a night's sleep in his metal shed. <laughs> and then once Ralph had been punished enough, Magichan, after having fed on his soul for long enough, decided, hey, that Rikita guy looks kind of tasty. That Rikita guy, maybe I'll go over, see what he's up to. And what does he do? He puts the fucking medallion on. He takes the medallion and he puts it on himself like a psychopath. So this is, this is kind of theory number one. You know, it's one of those, one of those components as to what happened to Nick Rikita. That he's been possessed by the demon that compelled an autistic man to butt fuck his mother and drove a fat retard into pill addiction and alienating his entire fucking family from his life. And now, after having put on this cursed totem, everything has fallen apart for Nick. And it did so in roughly the same amount of time. I guess this goes to say that if somebody sends you a Sonichu medallion, destroy it, and then beat the shit out of them because they're trying to curse you. They're not your friend. Now, you may think this is all laughs and jokes, chat, ah ha ha Oh, it's all funny. But I'll have you know that professional paranormal investigators are weighing in on this. Maybe you're familiar with uh, the irate gamer, okay? Chris Bores, you remember him? Well, after he put down the video games, he decided he was going to go bust some ghosts. He wanted to be a real-life Egon. And he's out there giving advice after having watched the case of Nick Ricada. Hey guys, Chris the Ghost Doctor here. And last night I ended up answering a question about a online personality. I guess his name is Nick Rikita. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know who this guy is, but my reply ended up getting a lot of buzz. So I went I told everybody that I would do a video on this and kind of explain things in a little bit more detail. So uh, they sent me some pictures of this guy back in like 2019 as compared to now. And if you see him back in 2019, he's very uh, full. He looks full of life. He talks very well. And now his face is very gaunt in his videos. I guess he slurs his words. Now, uh, all jokes aside, right? And I know this is funny. There's another Boar's video we're going to watch too. But like, he's unfamiliar with Nick. All right. Like Chris is off doing his own shit. He's doing, like, ghost stuff and video game stuff. He has no idea who the fuck Nick Riketa is. But even him, an outside observer who has no knowledge of Nick at all, looked at a picture of him from just a few years ago and compared it to what he currently looks like. And he's like, yep, that's, dumb. that's demonic possession. This guy is so fucked up, it has to be demons. That's how fucked up to a normal outside observer Nick Riketa looks right now the fall, the change between just a few years ago and now to a completely neutral third party. He looks so bad he's convinced he has Hellspawn living in his fucking soul. 
on the verge of passing out uh, from time to time, and people are are like, "What is going on with this guy?" Because I guess he, he's he's an alcoholic. Uh, at one point, he put a necklace on, and, and I guess there's some theories out there that it was cursed, and and could that do anything? And yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to say that's the complete catalyst of it, but it could have him putting a, a, a necklace on that somebody sent him that is cursed could have opened the door. If you don't know how to properly cleanse yourself or your 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 space, you know, once these things start to slip in, they can kind of like plant their flag and start to invade that space and wreak all kinds of havoc on their life. I think it. Somebody told you he 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 divorced over time. I saw. Uh, so yeah, they can just get in and, and cause all kinds of havoc in your life. And I saw that he's an alcoholic too, and that's kind of taken over his life as well. And the problem with this is. Uh, Every vice, human vice out there, drugs, alcohol, even porn, has their own frequency level that attracts beings in. They have their own frequency beings. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, just the people. Okay, one thing you need to know about Nick is that over the last year, as he's done multiple streams, he will occasionally start to look around the room, baffled, in silence. He'll stare off into a certain direction, or he'll stare up at the ceiling. And people have made jokes about ceiling cats inhabiting his house and living in the rafters, or a literal corner demon, which he looks at all the time. And this is our ghost expert, certified, 100% believable Chris Bores. he's a fucking expert, concluding that yes, the frequency of Magichan has um, instantiated itself, is that the word I'm looking for? Has, has become corporeal and latched onto Nick. And is now living in his house. So when you look at those old clips of Nick Ricada, why is he looking off in the corner? What is he doing? Our ghost expert here is confirmed. In fact, he is staring at demons. Literal hell spawn. You know, you have these alcoholic spirits uh, around you, constantly feeding off you because they love that. You know, they're they're not living. They can't drink a beer, so they have to drink it through you. They're they're feeding off you, and. You see, Nick Ricade is not really an alcoholic. <laughs> Nick, Ricade is, Nick Ricade is not really an alcoholic. The demon inhabiting him is. <laughs> That's a great one. Anybody ever use that one at AA? Uh, I, I, fuck your 12 steps, okay? I'm possessed by Satan, and Satan is a fucking alcoholic. This is not my fault. All right, it's his. This is why we see the life force kind of like draining out of this guy over over time because maybe that's exactly what's going on. Something is feeding off him. There, are, I've come up with different classifications of spirits, and parasite spirits are just one of those things. They feed off people, places, and things. So yeah, this this is a thing. I, I I'm dead serious here. Uh, over time, he's got also gotten. Uh, talking about sex more and sex acts and things like that and that's another attribute to this you know you get more guttural uh in all your actions because you have no inhibit inhibit um inhibitions basically <laughs> basically what chris is saying is yo i looked at this dude and all he does is massive rails of coke and um drink himself stupid and fuck whores it has to be demons now there's there's a little more to the video but i think you get the gist of it he even did a follow-up video talking about the, the, the medallion itself. How could you get rid of this evil totem? <laughs> how, how is he not like the King of X, by the way? Holy shit. Ghost Dr. Chris here, and today I want to talk about curse removal, because I'm getting a lot of questions on, you know, if you have a medallion, a Sonic 2 medallion, how do you remedy that situation? How do you get rid of this curse? So the best way and most effective way is to throw the item away, get it out of your house, uh, you, it, if this thing ha does have an attachment or like a tulpa like energy attached to it that's causing havoc on the unseen level that you can't see just get it out of your house it, it causes uh, chaos once it's there and once it's in your house it's going to plant its flag in your house and start causing all kinds of uh, chaos that, that ramps up yeah, like, maybe burn the fucking thing. You know, I, I'm not a huge paranormal guy. I like it for the entertainment value of it. But Chris isn't wrong here. Again, he's the fucking expert. He's, I love the fact, too. Can we all take a minute to appreciate the fact that, you know, he got shit for so long for being a, a knockoff AVGN. And now he's like a ghost expert weighing in on the demonic possession of Nick Ricada by Magichan. I, I love that. 
I want him to do more videos on. I'm not even bullshitting. I fucking love it. I want to see Chris Bores investigate the paranormal. We need that. I need that in my life as short as it is, Chris, please. When I die, I'll become a ghost. I'll be your sidekick. We can work together. And this is my helper spirit, Medicare. He also likes to attach to people and make them do obnoxious things. <laughs> None of this is my fault. It's all Jim. He's doing it. So Chris, Chris is a expert recommendation. Burn the fucking thing. What are you doing, Nick? Are you stupid? You got an anonymous letter with demon sigils on it. And you put it on like an idiot. He just, uh, he tempted fate. Magic Chan got a hold of him. Now, <laughs> this is such a weird thing to talk about, but it is bizarre that everybody that's possessed this stupid little medallion has had horrible things happen. Chris Chan going to prison for banging his mommy, Ethan Ralph's life imploding, and now Nick Ricada is under arrest for drug and weapon charges. I don't know which e-celeb is going to get this next, but burn the fucking thing, throw it out a window, have your neighbor roll over it with their car. You don't want Magic Chan knocking on your door. But what you do want, what you really want to make sure of, is that you buy one of those Magic Chan posters or one of the Magic Chan puzzles. Available at my, or medicare.myshopify.com. Quality work. Don't worry, Magic Chan likes the merchandise. It's okay. I checked ahead of time. I checked ahead of time. <laughs> You know, these cursed images, these these uh, these uh cursed totems aren't the only thing. i like to point you to a cursed image. There's Nick Ricada, along with uh, other individuals, all of whom have had bad outcomes. And this had nothing to do with Magic Chan. The man directly sitting next to him, Coach Red Pill, or as Nick likes to refer to him when he's drunk and high as a kite, Chef Red Pill, mm -hmm. Chef's Kiss, got his head blown off in the Ukraine. <laughs> he's dead. Coach is fucking dead. Ethan Ralph with a double thumbs up showing the uh, sexual prowess he possesses when he when he gives the little uh, truffle hunting to a hooker. Uh, had his life imploded. And then we got uh, we got Andy over there. Dude currently is doing pretty well. But he did have his whole aim, aim, aim thing. And uh, was really down in the doldrums for a while there. All four of these people, real bad luck. And Nick's been the latest victim. Which makes you wonder. Was anybody else there? If we're talking about bad luck and curses, if we're talking about who's next on the hit list for some nefarious uh, ectoplasmic evil that lurks out there, that's hunted these men down for some reason because of their gathering in Knoxville, who's not in this picture? Who, was el who else was at Knoxville that might be a future victim? I wonder. Who? Could it be? I mean, it's not like it's not like he's out there challenging the spirit of Magic Chan, saying, "Bring, oh my God, he is." Josh on Twitter, wear the medallion or shut up, you worthless limp cock. To which Dick Masterson responds, "Send me the medallion. The demon must be guarded." After watching everything that's happened, Dick, really, are you challenging Magic Chan? <laughs> Magic Chan. Uh, the demonic tulpa that's destroyed three men now? And now you're begging for the curse to come to you? That's what Nick did. With open arms, he said, give it to me. I don't know if we want to do that, Dick. That sounds like you're tempting fate. Oh. Oh, my God. Bad outcomes. Bad, bad outcomes, Chet. <laughs> so that was one of the theories that existed. And as silly as it sounds, uh, you know, people have really been kind of uh, taken aback by this whole <laughs> cursed medallion thing. Now, if it ends up going to Dick Masterson and everything falls apart for him, like that's, we're predicting that, right? If Dick Masterson gets this medallion and puts it on, he is officially cursed. And within two years, everything will fall apart. If that's the truth, that that happens, then we know this shit's real. And that Magic Chan is some kind of demon internet spirit. That we have all some, uh, what is it, a, a Tulpa, a, a Grigori, whatever you want to call it. That the internet itself is given life to. From all the negative energy of watching Chris Chan, we have created and crafted this demonic being that is hunting down 
micro isoleps. <laughs> and Dick Masterson is with open arms inviting it to come visit him. So start the fucking clock. If by May 2026, after receiving this fucking medallion, something horrific happens to him, we know Magic Chan is very real. And of course, you're going to want to have one of those posters and puzzles as a commemorative, uh, 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 <laughs> commemorative item. It'll be worth some resale value. Of course, you know these are it's all fun and games, right? When we're talking about this, because realistically, what what is done, Nick? In it's easy to say that. You know, he didn't, he didn't listen to people when they gave him some advice about what he should do. You know, it was a, a demonic spirit, but it was his own actions. He gave in to his own actions. He didn't moderate his behavior. He didn't, uh, you know, kind of slow his roll. He went a little off in the deep end with the drinking and potentially with the drug use. He should have listened to the He-Man PSA. Remember those 80s shows where they used to give you lessons as a child and tell you, hey... You don't want to grow up to be a fucking loser, do you? We should listen to He-Man. He never took the advice. Look where he is now. In today's story, Elena tried taking a magic potion which she thought would help her. Well, she found out there aren't any magic potions. And you know what? There aren't any magic drugs either. Anytime you take one from anybody but your parents or your doctor, you're taking a very big chance. You're gambling with your health, maybe even your life. Drugs don't make your problems go away. They just create more. Oh, my God, I had my mic off. Oh, my God, Boomer Jim. Boomer Jim fucking it up again. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been possessed by demonic spirits. It's not my stupidity, guys. I put on a totem uh, thing, <laughs> a totem medallion, so it's not my fault. Not my fault. Can't blame me. I'm an innocent baby. Oh, God, I'm a little fucking cherub. Not my fault. But he should have listened. He didn't listen. It's his fault. Thought he was better than Prince Adam? Not really. Sad. Sad and pathetic. But now, Nick has observed, or exhibited uh, behaviors that are uh, pretty indicative of somebody that's in the grips of alcoholism or somebody that's a little out of control. You can see this on clip channels like Eliza Clips and others that have put together compilations. I'm going to show a little bit to you. I want you to watch this and tell me, does this strike you as odd? Is this something you've ever seen somebody really do? Because I've never seen it. But once you kind of put it together and see how much he does it and the reasons why he gives you for doing it, it's a little fucking weird. Let's, uh, let's watch this. Is that why I licked the bottle? Real quick. Like there's, I know there's a clip video of me like licking the bottle a million times in the dick stream. I oh, felt yes, rage. Everyone, oh, well, uh, uh, distrust uh, everyone. Uh, everyone, uh, everyone uh, everyone's a fag. I'd say no, no one quotes. I don't have a will. They're all really doing shitty. it for money, because cloud, important. or whatever. And you've heard and people don't seem to realize this because no, uh, apparently uh, unjustified. Yeah. Ten- oh, alcoholic licked the bottle. I licked the bottle for six years, I think. Um, when you pour whiskey into a glass and you set it down. A little drip goes down the bottle. When you pay $200 for a bottle of whiskey and a drip goes down, you're like, that's like 86 cents. Lick it. Okay. Let's go over that just just because it's insane. No. Nobody licks it because that's 86 cents. Remember, Nick Riccata is somebody that had 100,000 people watching him on live stream. He makes a lot of money. Uh, from Super Chat donations, makes a lot of money from local support, has an inheritance, has a degree that gives him a good job. Nick Riccata is not the kind of man that's going to give a shit about 86 cents worth of liquor and try to be fiscally responsible with his booze. Sounds to me more like some kind of bullshit cope from somebody that's a little too much into drinking. That you just have to lick every fucking drop. And yes, I've seen a lot of people comment on his nose. I see it in the chat right now. Why is his nose so red? Well, there's this thing, maybe you've heard of the band called Gin Blossom, but there's this thing that drinkers get where because their nose goes into the glass when they're drinking so much, it dries it out over and over and over and over and over again and creates a skin condition where it gets bulbous and red and super inflamed. And Nick Riccata looks like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer a majority of the time that he streams because he has a fucking Gin Blossom. Because he buries his face... 
into the fucking glass. But there's more. Let's watch. Why do you like the bottle? Well, if I set it down on my carpet and let the drips run down the bottle, then there will be liquor in my carpet. So if I just let drips go down the side of the bottle and I set them all down, I'm going to have a sticky old fucking whiskey mess on the carpet all, all the time. That's terrible. That's terrible. So first it was because it costs some money. And then it was because he doesn't want to make a mess. But I'd like to point you to a couple of things, uh, like how he's lying through his teeth. This was included in the police report when they came to, well, when they batter, he used a battering ram to knock his fucking door down and then arrested his family. Uh, this is what they had to say. The important part's that second paragraph, that one little, that little standalone sentence. Uh, charges say officers noted the dirty condition of the home with clothing everywhere, dust and dirty dishes. That's kind of like an elbow drop, isn't it? That's like a cop taking one off the top ropes, macho man, Randy savaging his ass for no reason. Like, really? Like, damn bitch, really? Like, this is this was a cop's reaction to walking into Nick Ricardo's, I'm worried about whiskey on my rug? How about you dust? How about you vacuum? Why is there, how do you get mold on clothes, Nick? Why does the cop think it's so fucking disgusting in your house they literally had to talk about it. <laughs> like, what the fuck, bro? Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Shameful. So he's, he's getting a little bit into the drink. And you're really going to see that with the I lost the appeal to Montegraph stream that really kind of kicked off the week. But there's more to go over. And before we go into our first break, I'll give you a little hint about another aspect, really, of, you know, with the drugs and alcohol, what else is kind of going on to create, like, the perfect storm to fuck up this dude's life? Well. I guess you could say maybe it's a little bit of a sex addiction. Maybe somebody's a little bit horny. Maybe he's a goonin. Oh, God, I've got a goon. Goonin just a little too much. Goonin just a little too much out there. Okay, well, we are one hour in. We're going to take our first break. Everybody, uh, go take a go pee pee poo poo. Grab yourself a drink responsibly. Don't let the demons get you. Grab a snack. We'll come back. And we're going to get into the saga of the... God, there's so many fuck... There's so much shit ahead. Oh, my God. <laughs> Multiple hours of shit. So we've talked about the curse of Sonic... Or, I'm sorry, Magichan. Taking over Nick Ricada's body and causing him uh, some mischief. And uh, apparently Dick Masterson is now willing to take that curse on. We've seen him licking bottles and giving justifications on saving money and doing it. When really it's just he's filthy. But it's the gooning. It's the sex portion of this that also plays a component in it. Now, there there were signs, maybe, that there's some weird shit going on. You know, things people maybe missed. Like, lying on the floor and having women step on him. <laughs> Might have been a clue uh, that he's a horny, horny boy. Just, you know, being like, hey, I want these women to step on my balls. Oh, my Hold on. Hold on. Gotta... It'll all be paid off sooner or later. I don't. I don't quite understand what's going on here. I'm glad your wife is so okay with this, Nick. How did that happen? 
I, did she kick your knees out or something? No, no, I don't. Just <laughs> like The funniest part is when she's oh. down on you. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, I want to, can we take a step back just for a second before we really move forward to get into the throuple stuff and really acknowledge that when, when Nick kind of first presented himself online, it was more of a, an image of a wholesome, humble family man. You know, it was a guy that homeschooled his kids, uh, was in his happy little marriage in a nice, small little Midwestern town. Then he had a practice and he talked about the law. He'd rail on occasionally, not not at great length, but on occasion, about degeneracy in society and, uh, you know, people letting the vices get the better of them. You know, he'd talk about uh, people's sexual immorality on occasion or about their uh, stupid behavior on occasion. But his, you know, image, his brand that he really initially started with was the humble, wholesome family man. But as time has gone on, you know, it started with more and more drinking um, you know, especially on stream and then, you know, kind of playful sexual stuff, which you saw, you know, getting stepped on. Now there, there are images I can't show you. There's an entire portion of saga. I can't really go over because I can't show it on YouTube essentially where he went, um, where he was outed for being into swinging. See, people had this image that he was this, this, this wholesome family man until this Jamaica shit came up. And suddenly you're seeing stuff on his locals page where they've got liquor bottles shoved up their asses, he and his wife. And, you know, people are tracking down images of them on a vacation and they track it down to a swinging event in like some Caribbean island where he's literally, it's literally, you know, cucked blacked shit that he's doing. And, you know, he's at first denying, denying, denying. But then as you see, he starts to become more open about it. He's more out in your face about it until you start getting hot tub streams with other couples. Now, you remember that girl from earlier, you know, the one that wanted her paycheck because she's really unhappy being the, oh my God, old people are icky. You need to pay me because I touched your ding -a That chick? Well, she showed up on a hot tub stream with her husband. And uh, let's, let's take a look at the thruple. At the start of the the throuple threat to the sanctity of a marriage, and we're live. Oh, oh my no. God! Oh, is that? Hello, everybody. It says zero viewers. Yet. Yeah, because I don't we have it yet. we screwed up the first one, oh, no. and now we're on no, this one. there's a person there. And now there's people. Me, uh, we good. are we are here with Vito we're and back. his lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes. His wife, Dick Hey, we can keep this off. I know. I've got a compliment for Nick here. Phantom what? X says, whoa, Nick looking buff. Is it the angle or has he been hitting the gym? Ah, I have oh. actually been hitting the gym. <laughs> twice and Jim twice. is tired of getting hit. Jim is probably tired of you. Oh, that's true. But... Pink's <laughs> Oh my god. Everywhere, I guess we're swinging tonight. Maybe. I put it on the table, they've rejected me. Look, guys, here's the deal. There is no um, swinging tonight unless Nick and I get drunk enough when we decide our lips look too tasty. It's just them. I mean, everybody thought they were joking at the time, but turns out they weren't. Aaron's Where butthole is mine. You, you, notice, <laughs> you notice we ladies are on the inside is to keep these boys off the each other. The sexual tension. They can't help themselves. We pretend, <laughs> we pretend that the heads of our penises are magnets with the same charge, and we just go... Okay. Guys, I lost my voice, and you know how. Hey, fun fact. As they're all getting drunk in this hot tub together, talking about touching dicks, and hey, we're into you know, the swinging jokes and threesome jokes. Um, that guy on the left is divorcing his wife. They're getting divorced. Their marriage is over. They came into contact with, with Nick and his wife, and their marriage is now over. Can you guess why? It gets very uncomfortable. Okay. No driving and drinking. Good advice. I don't know what the lawyer would say about that, but I think it's fine. I believe Nick's official advice on drinking and driving is meh. Uh, Aristocock You says, didn't drink and drive until no, you're wait, convicted. You didn't, what did you name this stream? Uh, I, the hot, uh, Steel Toe members only okay. hot tub stream with special guests. It wasn't correct. Aristocock says hashtag swing stream. That's fine. Oh, this is hashtag swing uh, stream. Welcome. Welcome to the swing stream. Welcome to the swing stream. 
Now, I want to jump ahead a little bit here. This was, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks ago, months ago, that they did this uh, thruple hot tub thing, joking about swinging and everything. And I want to let you listen to uh, this guy who's making all these jokes about how my wife's a whore and she likes to fuck other people. And um, listen, listen, (laughs) I'm going to let it speak for itself. Let's fast forward to the future. I remember Nick ripping two massive fucking rails right in front of me, and I literally put my hand on his shoulder, and I said, dude, dude, you need to fucking chill. I'm worried that you're going to fucking die. No, no, don't worry. It's okay. I read up about this a lot. I can show you all the literature and everything else. It's okay because it doesn't all hit you right at once. And it, I'm just like, what the fuck? Uh, another time I told him, I go, this guy, like, I'm worried about this. I remember telling him one time, I go, my fucking wife is doing cocaine a lot, dude. How the fuck do we stop this? And he goes, you have to understand. Instead of going, holy shit, you're right. I, we, we've got families. This is f- a fucking problem. He goes, you have to understand. Sometimes people have stress levels that are up here. And their minds can only handle this much stress. And then when you do the stimulant, it bumps you up like this. And then you can handle more stress. I'm like, Nick, you fucking lunatic. Lower your stress levels. Well, he did. He lowered his stress, stress levels by burying his dick in your wife. That's how he lowered his stress levels, Aaron. He shoved his penis inside your wife. That's how he lowered them. Oh, my God, Nick, please. Stop doing rails off my wife's tits. God, please, Jesus, Nick, stop fucking her. I can't keep Nick. Please, Jesus, put the cocaine down. You fucked her 82 times in a row, God. Oh, sweet Jesus, she's divorcing me. Stop fucking her. This was a mistake, and I get in the hot tub, Nick. Jesus Christ, you stop fucking my wife, Nick. Please stop fucking my wife. Oh God, Ricky the Rail King is banging her again. It's the eighty-second time. Maybe you should have thought of that before you got in that hot tub. And we're live. Oh my God. Oh, it's all fun and jokes then. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. He was talking about meat slobber slops. pockets. Glass it says, was... "Take out the milk." Do you oh. not? Do you understand that it's not <laughs> sexy to call them that, and therefore says like, who? Guys, guys, what do you think don't listen. To? Disregard. What do you think he's referring? <laughs> don't listen to my wife. Just disregard her. Uh oh, somebody's getting divorced. Uh oh. Tits. No, oh. those are not milkers. What are milkers? Those are milk containers. Milkers would be the things that. The hands. Milk. The hands milk. Take out These your are hands. milkers. Okay, so we need a hand check. I don't know what this is. I was a dull hand model. I modeled bananas and oranges. Uh, malevolent bystanders says definitely disproving that swinger rumor. Yes, next yes. weekend we will have the uh, the Scontis in here as well. Yeah, and again, um, she, April, this guy's now soon to be ex-wife, moved in with the Rail King, Ricky Rackets here, and his wife, and formed a throuple. Now, Nick, during the police report, said. Um, that she wasn't living there, that she had just visited for a while. And yet, in apparent DM messages that were sent to people in law to, people you talked to when, you know, referring to all of this shenanigans, uh, she had said, I I should say, uh, that she did live there. So this dude's wife was so, like, he, okay, Nick Ricada fucked her so good, she moved in with him. Think about that. And there's... (laughs) There's poor Aaron. Just devastated. Oh, oh, that's rough. I mean, this is a dude that found out his wife, because they're not technically divorced yet, was getting arrested in a drug bust with Nick Ricada and his wife on somebody else's show. Ricky Rackett's the rail king got his wife arrested, and he found out through secondhand information. Hey, I'm not I'm not trying to ambush you, but there, I'm getting tons of messages. We're not reading but, messages. People no, are sending no, no, you. No, no, you need to. You need to. This is big I for know. the show. No, this I is know. big for the show. April has been arrested today with the Ricardas. Do you I know anything? Don't, I don't believe that. Is that her? I don't think so. No, that's not. No. <laughs> There's no way. That no, that's for sure been edited. When you Nick say Ricada my buddy, and his you, wife are in jail for uh for possession of those fucking Kiwi Farm. No, that's an edit. That's Joshua in the corner, or the ceiling cats in the corner demon editing photos. That can't be my wife being arrested with the man that she's been fucking for six months. Impossible. Along with Aaron Imholt. No, that's definitely been 
altered. It's fake. If it's not fake, the show will never end. Uh, Will Heron, Aaron, can oh you my, tell? Oh my God. It's real? Whoa. <laughs> oh, God, that hurts. I, oh, I mean, I've had heart attacks, so maybe this is related to that. Maybe the stent moved. But I've got some pain in my chest from hearing this. I think that's empathy. Am I empathizing? Is that sympathy I'm feeling? Pity, maybe? You got cucked so hard, bro, that your wife getting arrested with a dude she's fucking. Like, you weren't even aware. You had to, like, check your phone because nobody told you. She went to jail for banging a fucking coke fiend. <laughs> she didn't know. She didn't even contact you. That's brutal. Holy shit. Wow. I'm getting more mess right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, Aaron, oh. this is real? I, I don't know. Fuck. Wow. I just got another text about it. It's just a laughing emoji. It just says, ha ha. How is he reacting to his wife with Ricky the Rail King? <laughs> That's what it was. Oh, fuck. Dude, you got some work to do, brother. Well, I, I mean... I mean, technically, I we, don't. I think we can get those papers signed now. <laughs> Wait, so this is real? I just looked at the roster. What roster? Tonight's lineup? The, the county jail roster. I just got an in, inmate uh, number. Hey, yo, bro, welcome to our show. Love to have you on as a guest. Here's the inmate number of your whore wife that's fucking some other dude. Uh, thoughts? Audience? Thoughts? Any super chatters out there want to talk about this guy getting ambushed by the fact that his wife is banging a, a cocaine fiend? Anybody? Oh, we got we got $10 from Will Heron. It says, uh, ah, ha, 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 ha. How's that hot tub stream hitting you now, buddy? Her inmate number. This is in the county jail oh. number. Wow. wow. How, did, how do people fuck. find this out this quick? They're fuck, they find everything. They found out who my fucking cousin was. Wow, that's like the same thing. I'm. Just that was was that was was he giving him a little snark there? Oh yeah, yeah. Them finding out about your who your cousin is totally the same as your wife fucking some other guy and going to prison. Yeah, it's a one for one. Fucking cousin was. Wow, that's like the same thing. I'm just. I, mean, I, I, I feel. Yeah, I feel it just lets it hang in the air. I feel dread. I feel horror. I feel shame and pity. Now, I mean, Aaron, obviously, he's going to proceed with the divorce. I'm guessing. Jesus, why wouldn't he? You got your your wife running around having sex with some other guy, getting arrested in a drug bust, all this other crazy fucking shit. Like, who wants that headache? But, again, brought it on himself by doing a, a hot tub stream. And Everybody was all gung-ho about wife swapping until it got a little too real. And things went a little downhill. A little bit downhill. So we've gone from a very successful guy doing a lot of live streams to a very large audience. You start to see the liquor starting to kind of creep in, the you know, the bottle licking, and he's looking a little more disheveled, a little a little less put together. Suddenly he's doing uh, you know, a little more outrageous stuff that's a little counter to what his image was he initially presented. Uh, you know, women stepping on him or uh, hot tub streams with uh, people from different podcasts to the point that the chick's moving into his house and that's got to be weird. I mean, I'm not going to harp on about his family uh, dynamics, but he's got kids. So, I mean, if you've got some coke whore living with you, it's going to be a little awkward around the breakfast table. You know, they want to talk about My Little Pony and Transformers and she's she's going through withdrawals because she needs a little more cocaine. You know, hey, hey, Daddy, what's going on with this strange blonde lady? Oh, it's okay, honey. She's just in a K-hole right now. Wh what is that? It's kind of like when you don't get your uh, Frosted Flakes. You're missing out on the sugar. She's missing out on something that's like sugar. Uh, you know, K-hole K K withdrawals. That's 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 all. Don't ask. Don't, Sweetie, don't talk to the whore. That's hired help. We don't talk to them. Okay, they're not really people. This isn't a real person. 
<laughs> we don't, you don't talk to that thing. That's just for mommy and daddy's amusement. Okay, you eat your you eat your cocoa puffs. I'm gonna drive you to school. That's a little weird. I'm gonna say a little weird dynamic around that breakfast table, but whatever. I'm not here to judge lifestyles, just end results of lifestyles. <laughs> That, you know, again, what's the end result of the lifestyle we're watching as things just get worse and worse? This is mugshots. It's you and your wife and your whore going to prison together for the entire internet to see. I'd say that was probably some bad decision making along the way. But there were other things. And these are these are a little bit longer. We've got uh, his interactions with fans and other people, you know, people that he associated with. So we're going to take a look at some of that. We're gonna, you're gonna buckle in because we're gonna watch this. It's about 20 to 30 minutes long. We may jump around a little bit, but it kind of shows his reaction to a former fan. Now, this was the one I took the uh, nuanced approach on and said, yeah, it's a little weird. This guy's got some kind of a awkward parasocial relationship. He's trying to get going with Rakeda. He's getting a little. It's just, it's weird, and that's understandable. It's weird, uh, but Rakeda's reaction to it was also strange. You know, he's taking a man at his lowest point in life and using it as a punchline. You know, using his uh, his wanting to ha- uh, to commit suicide essentially uh, to mock him because why he's he's upset. Some of these kiwi farmers, some of these commentators. Here we go. This is fun. Not only. Also, do you notice uh, his demeanor? Right, it kind of compared to even earlier clips where even the licking the bottle thing, where he's talking about licking the bottle. I mean, just physically, you can see it. He's a little bit gaunt, a little pallid. You know, eyes are a bit sunken. That's where the o- ozomic, you know, diabetes med thing came on. Is he trying to lose weight? Is there like a drug thing going on, cirrhosis thing going on? Well, now we know what it is. It's coke. But you can see it. He's slurring his words. I mean, this is what his streams became. You know, he used to be a very energetic guy. He'd read, he'd read legal documents, make jokes, uh, had a good rapport going on. Did the unbreaded thing, did the the trials with Rittenhouse and Johnny Depp. Uh, had a cycling in and out guests nonstop, very fast in response. But you can kind of see he kind of starts to get a little a little slower on the uptake. You know, he's not as fast as he was, slurring his words a bit more and more. You can just tell if you've ever been around a drunk or drug addict. You can you pick that vibe up easily. Some of these kiwi farmers, some of these commentators. Here we go. This is fun. Not only do I know them, do I know their failures? Do I know their social security checks? Do I know their inability to even contact their own family for help? Do I know their desire to leave their own state? Oh, man. Oh, man. I cannot fucking imagine being in the place that this man is, that he has to go to a YouTube streamer to beg, beg, beg for a shred of attention. Say, please, please, Rackets. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, man. Begging is embarrassing. I love you. I have, my family hates me. I can't get a job. I'm so mentally handicapped. Like, I, I can't do anything. My name is John. All I want to do, I want to die. I want to put a bullet in my mouth, but I can't afford a gun. This, by the way, <laughs> uh, to give you a little background context, um, I'm fairly certain everybody knows who John is, but I'm just going to leave it as John. Uh, it's somebody who was a, a big fan of his in his locals, to be fair, to give you the whole background, uh, who slowly over time started to get to, just upset with how Rackets was behaving. And apparently before that happened, he'd gone to Nick um, and basically said, my life's shit. Uh, nothing's working out. I don't have any friends or family or support. Um, I'm very depressed and I'm going to kill myself. And I don't know what to do. And you're the only person I can think of to reach out to. And again, it's a little weird. It's parasocial and in its nature. Uh, but Nick has a conversation with him and, uh, uh, you know, gets him some help. And then later on, uh, this guy starts to get kind of disgusted with how Nick is acting and starts talking shit. And Nick gets upset. He's like, I helped you out when you were in your lowest point. But instead of, you know, saying it bluntly like that, like, hey, this guy's an asshole. I helped him out when he was at his lowest point. Now he's kind of talking shit about me. 
or keeping it private and having that conversation, he gets shit-faced drunk and does this, which is going to be 30 minutes of him mocking a guy for wanting to kill himself. Texting me this, by the way. I'm like, hey, holy shit. Brother, you want to kill yourself? Like, that's not good. No, I deserve to die. Well, I mean, probably, but seriously, no, that's not good. Can you buy an Uber and go to the hospital? No, I can't afford an Uber. You can't afford an Uber. Like eight bucks. You can't afford one. Why? I'm on Social Security because we use some piece of shit. But I'm so successful. Oh, man, that's fucking embarrassing. Man, that is embarrassing, right? I'm such a piece of shit. My family hates me. Nobody loves me. I'm just going to kill myself. You're messaging me. You're texting a fucking YouTuber. Holy. Oh, my God, man, that's embarrassing. Hey, John, you're texting me. And I say, I'm like, holy shit, please don't kill yourself. First of all, you can't afford the bullets. You've already expressed that. You can't afford the hardies that would kill you either. You're just you. You're just a useless pile of garbage. You can't afford an Uber to the hospital. You're texting me, begging me, please. Oh, man, I'm spiraling. Don't kill me. Don't let me kill myself. I'm like, why? First of all, I can't control you from killing yourself. Only you can do that, brother. Have you tried calling 911? No. I can't spell. I'm Korean. Literally just 911. No. How far are you from the hospital? Four miles. Why don't you walk towards the hospital and then call 911 and tell them where you're walking? Because you cannot do it. Oh, my God, man. This is embarrassing. He can't get to the hospital. Would you buy a limo or a private jet to the hospital like a normal middle class person? They're like, oh, I can't make it to the middle class. I'm crippling disabilities and anxieties. I love you, though. I love you. You can feel, right? Can you feel the vitriol chat? Uh, kind of that anger bubbling underneath the surface. Like, this isn't somebody that's addressing a small betrayal. He's very angry. Now, the liquor has kind of tempered it a bit, but he's throwing in more and more details, trying to kind of undercut him as much as he can. Now, we're only three minutes into this. He goes on for 30 minutes about this. And again, it's because this, this particular person, John, whatever, uh, is also somebody who's on Kiwi Farms, and he really is upset with Kiwi Farms. He's upset with uh, Josh, and he's upset with the thread that exists on Kiwi Farms about him. So it's like this ultimate betrayal to him, but he's going to go on and on and on and on about this. You're the greatest streamer of all time. You're the fucking best streamer ever. Oh, my God. I love you. Please teach me how to do life. Like, I can't teach you how to do life because you're retarded. But what I can teach you right now is that you probably shouldn't kill yourself. Now, this is taking away from my life, my evening, you know, and my wife and children in my normal middle class, upper middle class home with uh, real things. And I'm talking to a fucking retard, a literal goddamn, by definition, suicidal retard. And all I'm trying to do in this entire world is save this person's life. Save this person's life from the most dangerous person they have. Right, John? Right, John? Right, John? Were you walking to that hospital? No, you weren't. Were you, John? You were sitting in your shitty Section 8 apartment that you could not fucking pay for because you can't hold a job. And you, your relatives all told you you were an embarrassing reject. Now, I want you to look at the juxtaposition we have here. As, as Nick is telling you this story about how he tried to save this guy's life, which is a noble thing. You know, this guy's he's down bad. He wants to kill himself because his life is shit. Now, as Nick is telling you that story about how he saved this guy who has a shit life, he's making sure to emphasize how shit that life is. Basically, basically <laughs> coaxing him into trying to do it again. Hey, John, remember when I saved you from trying to kill yourself because everything you touch turns to shit? Hey, John, remember the fact that you're poor? Hey, John, remember you can't hold a job? Nobody loves you? Hey, John, you remember the fact that you're, you know, everything is terrible and you really have no reason to exist anymore? Uh, and I saved your life, but those things are still true, John? I can disown you. And all, the only option, your emergency contact at the fucking hospital, John, right, John? was a YouTube streamer you paid to be your friend.
the YouTube streamer you paid to be your friend. Now, John, what happens in most cases when you pay someone to be your friend and then you tell that person, right, John? Tell the person, holy shit, I, I'm going to end it all. What do they say? What does what the person you pay to be your friend say? Say, sorry, brother, I don't know how to help you. But they say, hey, John, here's my personal phone number. I hate you're doing this, John. So he goes on at length about this. This is the Dear John video. And I, I bring it up because I think it kind of highlights when the drinking started taking over more. I'm not here to try to give you how do you deal with somebody you have no idea who they are on the internet or some weird parasocial shit. Again, it's nuanced. It is. Um, but this is not something Nick Ricada of two years ago would have done. He wouldn't have gotten shit face drunk and talked incessantly about how shit this person is and about how suicidal they were and how fucked up they are and what a worthless sack of shit they are. He just wouldn't have done it. He would have done something else. He would have reached out or maybe he would have unloaded on them, but he would have done it in a uh, better way. And I, I think it kind of highlights, like I said, that escalation, right? That acceleration that took place over the last year where you can kind of see like the alcohol and the other shit kind of coming in. I mean, he went from a guy with a stable, normal life to somebody that's drinking more and more, getting drunk on stream, missing streams, uh, apparently, allegedly doing drugs uh, based on a police report of finding drugs in the house. Can't say they're his. We don't know 100%. But the police saying, oh, you know, the wounds on his arms look like track marks. His behavior is erratic. And, you know, he's lost weight. The way he looks, the way he acts, kind of seems like somebody doing drugs. So, I mean, you know, it's a, a fair guess. Uh, and then, you know, engaging in um, risky sexual behavior that it's already led to a dude's marriage disintegrating. And I can't say that um, that the, the, the rackets are responsible for that. Maybe uh, Aaron and April hate each other and they never got along and they were going to get divorced anyway. But having a, a thruple relationship probably didn't fucking help. And if you listen to Aaron in that one clip where he's talking about, fuck, you know, Nick's doing all these rails, he's sorting big fucking lines, and now my wife's doing the same shit. It feels like, you know, he's saying, hey, this guy was a bad fucking influence. You know, this was a guy that uh, didn't give a shit and was a bad influence on her and made a, a problem even worse. So, you know, you've got all this erratic behavior that's being fueled by, you know, activities and behaviors that aren't fucking cohesive to a good, happy lifestyle. And it gets worse and worse. And this is one of those examples. What's another example then? Well, let's look at Eric July. Now I know, oh my God, oh, Eric July. Oh boy. You know, I asked uh, when I did that stream about four months ago, why am I supposed to hate Eric July? What What's the funny thing about the guy? And the most response I got was he can't handle trolling and he overreacts to shit. Well, I mean, fucking spoiler alert, nobody likes to get trolled and people overreact. I mean, that's kind of basic bitch shit, right? That That's not something that paints a huge target on somebody in my eyes. Like, <laughs> the whole point of trolling is to piss people off. If they get pissed off, well, you succeeded. So, you know, if he, if he was getting trolled and got pissed off, sounds like they accomplished the job. But that's the end result they're looking for is him getting pissed off. Or he overreacts. Oh, okay. But, I mean, what about those two things makes him this huge lol cow that, you know, should be having people show up to his relatives' graves and pissed on? Because that was one of the things they kept talking to the guy about. We're going to go to your grandfather's grave and desecrate it because you overreact to trolling. And then they show up at the grave. I don't know. But while this is going on between all these different parties that are invested in it, uh, you know, Nick Ricada is supposed to have a friendly relationship with Eric July. But he starts making some snide comments. He starts saying shit like, I wish you a million sales to Eric in regards to his comic book while this is all going on. Or telling him he needs to take a joke better. Or or kind of siding with the people that are giving Eric shit until they have a showdown on his on his podcast. I got to say, um, you mentioned that I never reached out to you. Uh, I don't have any DMs either. Well, I, I've never taken issue with you like that. So you call me out on two live streams. By name. Yeah, because you were talking about me, Nick. The fuck? 
Like, again, this isn't a, this isn't, a, here we go. We're back to square one where it's like, I'm the responding agency here. And then you're like expecting having that, having that expectation of me. I haven't contacted you because I haven't had a fucking problem. Sounded like one today, brother. No, no, I just, I, I gave you my position. And that, that was my genuine opinion, uh, opinion of, of the situation. I thought the shit was fucking corny. That was my position. <laughs> and, and that's cool. That, 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 that's all that it was. It, it, right. it, and, and yeah, like if I if I had like a genuine problem, this is what not, and I made I, I see you didn't acknowledge this. But when I said what it is that I said, I was like, hey, I don't have it. Disappointed as I might be, I don't have any fucking. Yeah, I don't wish no ill will. And I don't got no fucking problem with you, because if I had a problem with you, I just tell you, Nick. All right. So, yeah, that's I'll why you that. haven't got no DMs for me. OK. Yeah, I, I have not uh, seen any reason to, quote unquote, correct you or Anything other than clarify my position of uh, I think this shit's gay completely. Dick started it. I mean, Dick responded to Nina, but yeah, Dick started it. And uh, and that you eventually engaged. I think your fans engaged at the beginning and stirred shit up. And I do think that even though I don't think it's the cool thing to do, that not feeding the trolls would end this. But I'm not telling you to do that because you have a business model that involves monetizing your haters, making fun of them, showing them out to be fools, which they often are. Also, I'd like to point out the irony here. Um, you know, we just watched Dear John. And if you remember, that video starts out with Nick going on at length about those fucking Kiwi farmers. And here he is chastising Eric July, saying, hey, you engage with your haters and you feed the trolls, and that's your problem, man. That's This fucking situation exists because you don't know how to hold back. When Nick literally is doing that. I mean, how, Nick, are you going to get angry? with Josh and Kiwi Farms and people fucking with you online or talking about you or speculating and theory crafting, you know, and engage with that and then offer the advice to some other guy going through some shit and saying, oh, you're doing basically all the shit I'm doing. I mean, was that introspection that we just got there? What, what is that? Somebody explain it to me. I've laughed at plenty of those. Uh, I still laugh at it. Riley's a fat fucking retard and a stupid idiot for showing up at your business. If he did that to me, I would tell him he's a dumb motherfucker. Okay. So uh, the reason yeah. I've never messaged you, um, and I say this publicly, is because you didn't want to talk about the lawsuit. I didn't want to accidentally drag you into that conversation. You could reach out. You did today, which is awesome. Is there anything else you want to say? I don't want to sit here and belabor this. Uh, I got I got no bad blood with you, man. Uh, I hated hearing that you thought that like I was being dishonest or disingenuous in any way because I've never been. And uh, if I had a problem, I would fucking tell. Uh, again, I want you to think about how weird this is. Compare this to Dear John. This is, I, I think this is really important. What was the, the two things already within the first two minutes of this that fucking kind of blow my mind. His, he was upset with the, the Dear John video because trolls were fucking with him. And he saw this guy as part of that trolling group and he's fucking Kiwi farmers. He then turns around and tells Eric July, don't engage with your haters, even though that's what Nick does. And, 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 you know, and now he's going into to this. I'm going to back it up. I want you to listen to this again because it's kind of stunning. They often are. I've laughed at plenty of those. Uh, I still laugh at it. Riley's a fat fucking retard and a stupid idiot for showing up at your business. If he did that to me, I would tell him he's a dumb motherfucker. Okay. So uh, the reason yeah. I've never messaged you, um, and I say this publicly, is because you didn't want to talk about the lawsuit. I didn't want to accidentally drag you into that conversation. You could reach out. You did today, which is awesome. Is there anything else you want to say? I don't want to sit here and belabor this. Uh, I got I got no bad blood with you, man. Uh, I hated hearing that you thought that like I was being dishonest or disingenuous in any way because I've never been. And uh, if I had a problem, I would fucking tell you. But I, I don't have a problem with you. I want you to make all the money on earth. Yeah, uh, here's the second point. I, I want you to really, really take this in. Nick felt betrayed because a former fan was going on Kiwi Farms and talking badly about him. And he's he probably is angry at Josh about that. And yet he can't seem to understand why Eric July would take umbrage with Nick when he is friends with people that are doing that exact same thing. He's looking at Dick Masterson and Riley and these other people, and Nick's kind of giving the statement where he's like, oh, I thought they were being stupid, but whatever. You know, it's not me doing it. Yet, Nick, you went on a 30-minute drunken tirade talking about how John was suicidal and maybe he should have pulled the trigger. You got that upset about it. 
but you can't figure out why Eric July might be upset that you're not going to bat for him, or that maybe he'd be upset seeing you associate with people that are talking about pissing on his grandfather's grave. That's strange to me. It's strange to me how you can have a 30 minute tirade and basically be doing everything that you're throwing kind of on to Eric July. It's, it's weird. And I, yeah, and I, and I appreciate that. Tomorrow. People will always go, why don't you, why don't you ditch Dick? And I go, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, no matter what you think about Dick, me, anybody else in this situation, Dick is honest. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> and I'll say this about Eric. I like Eric. I want Eric to make a million dollars a day. Um, I don't think he engaged in fraud. A few minutes later. Never until today, until I gave you time on my show that was not for you, you begged to come on like a beta bitch in my fucking chat. You came in, oh, you gotta talk to me man to man. You didn't talk to me man to man. You never sent me a goddamn DM on earth. You talked to me multiple, you talked about me multiple times. You never sent me a fucking DM, not one. Notice how the anger's ratching up while he's holding the drink, by the way. You know, we talked about this earlier as he kind of has descended into a spiral. You know, completely completely sloshed when he's talking about Dear John and his anger at this ex-fan for kind of stabbing him in the back. And now he's angry at Eric July for coming on the, the stream. Uh, he didn't express that anger in person sober. But now that he's got the drink in his hand, now he's angry. Not one. You have my phone number. You didn't send me a single goddamn thing. You thought all appropriate to talk to me. And when all I was going to do, all I was going to do was play your clips and break down why you were legally wrong and nothing else. You came into my chat and you begged me to come on my show like a weirdo, like you don't have a bigger audience than me. A few moments later. You, th you think, you think that I'm the bad guy? Because other people trumped you up and told you you were so great and you're so fucking smart. And I told you the entire time, don't do this, don't say this, don't, don't answer this. Get better lawyers. Get people who don't pander to you. Get people who will be honest with you. Pay people who will teach you how to mitigate risk. You didn't want to listen. You didn't want to fucking listen because I'm just a white bread ass nigga, right? I'm just a dumb motherfucking uh, who's never heard of the streets. I've never, I don't know shit about the streets, right? Because I, I didn't grow up on the streets, dude. Ricky rackets the rail king. Tell him the black guy that he's more street than he is. You know, funny, fun fact, in case anybody's wondering what this is about, there was a, a lawsuit that got instigated or tried to get instigated between Eric July and uh, some kind of religious organization because of similarities in the uh, title of one of the comic books or a character. Um, and, you know, Nick is talking about, oh, this is in regards say you need to get a lawyer and you need to do all this stuff. Um, Eric won that. It, it, it was settled. It was arbitrated. Uh, both sides walked away happy. You know, coming to the understanding that nobody's going to confuse a comic book and a church. But again, I guess, you know, Eric is... Uh, He's not hood enough to understand that. It's not hood like the Ricky the Rail King here is. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. I don't know where you grew up, but where I grew up was the number one crime neighborhood in Houston, Texas in the 80s. People got shot every fucking day. I don't know where you grew up, but I grew up in the most crime-riddled area in Massachusetts. We had somebody steal pencils once. Fucking FBI and helicopters were all over that neighborhood. Black man. <laughs> you don't know what it's like being in the hood like I do. Did I mention my family's worth hundreds of millions of dollars? As I was around so many of those Negroes. I saw them through my metal fences grandfather had installed at the mansion. He used to throw peanuts at them and say, Excuse me! <gasps> yes, you, the poor Negro! What's it like living in the hood? And they'd tell me in their jibber-jabber hood talk. I remember those days, Eric. Can you comprehend what that was like? 
three murders a day came from my neighborhood every day where I grew up. And I was the only white kid there. The only one. You talk to me about this shit because you're black and because I'm white, you're the most racist motherfucker on the planet. Everyone I knew growing up was black. <laughs> I just, I have this picture of him. Oh, I have this picture of like rackets having this argument publicly with Eric July in like a street corner in Compton, just holding up a megaphone and being like, hey, this N word is pretty fucking racist. Just, I just want to see the reaction. Everyone. Everyone I hung out with, everyone I was friends with. When I moved to Minnesota, it's 95% white. All my friends were black or Mexican. You want to come at me on racism? You fucking loser. You fucking racist piece of shit. You want to do this? You want to play this card? You Marvel copying piece of shit. Oh, they're racist. Oh, they don't like. Where was his anger when he was on your show? Oh, you were sober. Why are you acting like this now? Oh, you're drinking. Maybe part of the reason you're having difficulties in navigating these relationships online with fans or former fans, uh, critics or um, supporters, or people that you just happen to know through happenstance like Eric July, is because the alcohol is disinhibiting you. Because you can't control yourself because you're giving into your vices. Maybe this should have been the warning sign, the pull up, pull up, as everybody has said repeatedly. I don't know. But it starts to kind of establish this pattern of behavior. Now, are there gripes that he could have that are legitimate? Of course. I don't know the relationship between these two men that great. I can just give you an observation based on the interactions I see playing out. What did I see of Eric July? Bunch of people saying he overreacts. Okay, great. And then I see people threatening to piss on his grandfather's grave. Then trying to get him in a lawsuit with a fucking church. You know, all these people fucking with him. And I keep watching, and I'm like, okay, but why are we fucking with this guy? What, like, what's the motivation? Why? What did he do? Is Eric July out there in a, a fursuit shitting in diapers? Eric July touching kids? Eric July robbing banks? Like, what, what did the guy do that brought, you know, this much attention that made him a giddy target of fucking with? And nobody really ever gave me an answer besides he overreacts. And then I watch, you know, streams like this. And it's not Eric July freaking out, it's Nick. Right? Like, am I wrong on this? I feel like I've taken crazy pills. The black man's success. I don't want white people to succeed ever. I hate white people. They're gross. They're stupid. Take it easy, champ. Why don't you stop talking for a while? My reparations for black people stealing. So I can be the white guy who loots a black store for once in my fucking life. Rather than you stealing all of the Afrin from a Walgreens, I'm stealing all the goddamn, uh, I don't know, uh, shit, ethnic you. hair products. Ethnic hair products from a black guy. I want to steal everything from your store. Jerry I'll, Curl. I'll bring David Blaine to do every fucking second of it. Hi think black people are hilarious and my best friends white people have never been my friends in my life but you're gonna i know i already know you and your fucking get little posse of race baiting sjw marvel cock sucking pieces of shit are gonna come out and be like this race is well i mean nick if he was like that why were you friends with him in the first place like if if he was a race baiting sjw piece of shit why why were you associating with him I, I don't know, but let's, you know, let's, let's fast forward a little bit and uh, take a look. How did it turn out? Well, Eric won his lawsuit against the, well, arbitrated his lawsuit against the church. Nothing happened. The, like I said, uh, because why would it? Like, how are you going to confuse a comic book and a church? But let's look, let's look at uh, how things went. Uh, Nick, I wish you a million dollars. Eric makes a million dollars. Well, his, uh, uh, his comic book, a million bucks. Was, was wildly successful. Nick even responded to me saying this because <laughs> I said, uh, uh, Nick, quickly wish me a million hat sales. Uh, why more or way more than a million? I want a hat on every child. Not sure why everyone thinks I'm serious. I always loved and supported the concept of the Ripperverse and always said I didn't care about the quality of the product. I love the idea of the independent creation. My messaging on this was consistent before and after the drama. I hope you get a million chemos. This probably is why I'm still alive. He's wished me a million gimos. 
I heard uh, Yaira broke a million dollars. So big congratulations. You're welcome, Eric. I kept wishing you would make a million dollars. You have several times. So awesome. So awesome. Uh, what's what's Eric been up to lately? Oh, McFarlane. McFarlane fucking toys is making a statue based off based off the comic book he just drove to wild success. So I don't know, man. I mean, I know Nick was out there saying you should have listened to me and you got these lawyers and you do it this way. It seems like he did pretty fucking fine on his own there. Seems like he was doing just fine on his own there. So you're starting to kind of establish. He's getting into fights more and more. Maybe they're justified. Maybe they're not. He's drinking more and more. Seems to be getting a little out of hand. Missing more of his local streams. Things seem to be kind of weird. He's doing these hot tub streams. He's got these women coming over. This guy's getting a divorce. Just some weird shit's kind of going on. And that leads us in to this week. And this week is when shit hit the fan. This week is when everything kind of came toppling down. That's why you're getting mug shots. And it starts with a stream regarding a civil suit he's involved with. Now, uh, Montagraph might be somebody you're all familiar with. Uh, back in the day, I had my own encounter with Montagraph. A uh, Montagraph, uh, what did I call him? I called him uh, Q Boomer. And he had his little friend, Agent 99 or some shit like that. And they'd go around starting shit with people and threatening them to dox them and do this other shit. And at the time, Monograph was fucking with this guy called Drummer. I think it was Drummer. I think that was the name of the YouTuber. I can't remember 100%. And so, you know, I, I thought, that's fucked up. And then I got into my own little shit flinging contest with Monograph, like four or five months. Now, I'd like to, I, I, I want to give some backstory here, because Nick has said on occasion, and you'll see it in the stream as we go over this, that uh, I introduced him to Monograph, but there seems to be like a weird insinuation that somehow I got Nick into this. So I'd like to clear that up real quick for everybody. So here's fact number one about Monograph. This is a stream I did with Nick. It's an archive version of it. If you look in the upper right-hand corner and look at the date, it's from the end of June. And if you look at that year, what's that year say? Oh, 2019. Now, Monograph ended up suing Nick Ricada. Because uh, Nick started making statements that Monograph was a uh, flagrant pedophile and that he molested boys and different things like that. And then he said, uh, sue me. He challenged Monograph to sue him. But remember, the stream I did with uh, Nick about Monograph and about a lawsuit he was engaged with uh, was in 2019. If you look at this, this is from Kiwi Farms where they talk about when the lawsuit began. It says on the 11th of January of 2023 through summons issued on December 12th of 2022, Steve Quest, who's Monograph, sued uh, Nick Ricada for defamation, intentional and negligent infliction of emotional distress based on statements made in October of 2022. So that's over three fucking years later. Now, if you go back and watch those streams about Monograph that I did with Nick, where we talked about the case, or about the independent ones that I did talking about what he was engaged with with Drummer, You'll see that I talk about Monograph as being a Q-boomer. I make fun of him for being old and weird um, and tell him his memes are shit. But that's about the gist of it. I mean, there's nowhere in those streams where I say that Monograph is a pedophile. So I'm not saying that Nick is like insinuating that I'm the one that put him on this path to make these statements. But I never said them myself. And besides that, this is three fucking years later he decides to go off on Monograph. So I just wanted to I wanted to put that out there to clear that up a little bit. I'm muted. Ugh, I know the feeling. So this all leads into this is a backstory. So Nick is dealing with this this lawsuit, the civil lawsuit with Bondograph, who's suing him. He hires like a big boy lawyer, Randazza. You know, like this is the this is the free speech lawyer. This is the big buck motherfucker that's going to come in and clean house. And he's up against Bondograph, who's got like. He's got like a guy from a strip mall. And they file some kind of, a, you know, a appeal or some shit related to uh, the rules under which the case is going to be held, Colorado, Minnesota, whatever. And you'd think that's going to be like a clear, easy victory, right, for the big dollar lawyer. That Randazza is going to come in there and he's going to win that case. But Monograph wins it. His lawyer, his strip mall lawyer wins it. So Nick starts up a stream to talk about the Monty appeal in regards to a civil case that's now been going on for two fucking years. 
based on these statements he made back in October of 2022. And uh, this is really what kickstarts this week. It kind of brings in all these diff, you know, all these different threads we've looked at for what's going on with Nick Ricada and all these kind of weird things that have been happening for the last year or two. All kind of, all kind of comes to a head with this stream, and it's fucking wild. It is crazy. Nick is completely fucked up on a level that you can't look at and not come away and be like, this guy has an addiction problem. And he's saying some bonkers shit that's going to definitely impact him, not just in a civil case, but in his upcoming criminal cases. So having said that, we've gone for another hour. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to get into the main show. This was just slightly building up a little background to get you into the crazy shit. To get you into, into some absolute insane shit. Where we go over the Monty stream, the arrest, the charging uh, that were the charges that were filed, just just fucking everything. As I said, this really started with this stream. So it's kind of like I I don't know. I mean, maybe it should have been like the big warning flag, you know, the death flag, the red flag. Everybody should have seen it and been like, oh shit's coming down the pipeline after this. But Nick uh, does his stream. He starts his stream. And um, I'm used to him being over on Rumble. One of the things that you need to know about Nick Riccata is he had a Rumble contract uh, where he got paid exclusively to kind of stream there. He had to direct people over, and it's weird shit, kind of flipping between Rumble and YouTube. Uh, but I don't know if that contract didn't get renewed, if they dropped him, if there was troubles with the negotiations. What the fuck happened with it? But he's been streaming more on YouTube. So I happened to see that he's over on YouTube streaming pretty late at night. And I was like, oh. And I saw it said Monty. So I thought, oh, maybe like the case is over. So I show up in the chat, and it's about 40 minutes into this thing. And uh, apparently he had gone on a bathroom break, and it had been nearly an hour. He disappeared from, you know, like we do a five-minute break here, maybe six minutes. He just said, hey, i got to go uh, bathroom break or check on my wife or some something. And I'll be back in 10, 15 minutes. 45 minutes later, coincidentally, about the amount of time it takes to have a K-hole experience, just saying, uh, he comes back to the stream, and uh, we begin with this. So let's let's jump into it. I'm muted. I'm fucking muted. Jim, God damn it! Let me reread this chat. This is from Medicare. Medicare, if I was Asian and gay, he says, <laughs> "What?" Medicare says, 45 minutes. I think this might be my fault, chat. Hashtag buy a hat. I wish him a million bathroom breaks. It looks like he took it literally. Yeah. Yeah, dude. God damn it. Uh, you guys can see. I'm fucking tossed. This is great. This is how streaming should be. Everybody's mad if you stream drunk. You're the one person who's not mad ever on the internet is Medicare. If you stream junk, uh, drunk, he's very happy. I mean, that is, that is kind of, he does have a point. I, I, I did show up and I was very happy to watch the stream unfold. So Jim is the longest piss on record. Medicare, I wasn't pissing. Look, it was my time of month. I had my period. I bled. I recovered. I took my doll in the middle of it. And then here I am. Here I am, my brother. Tell me more about COVID masks. God damn it, you sick fuck. Why don't you ask Minnesotans for help? Jim's out here. He's like, eh, eh, look, my immune system is like a 12 year old boy at a Catholic church during COVID. Please don't fucking COPD me to death. And I'm like, Jim, God damn it. Let me get your death meta. Let me get your death interview. All I want to do is to make all the money on earth off of your death. God. Let me just take a moment again to interrupt everybody after he, he had said he'd like to make some money off my death. Uh, swing on by the merch shop over at medicare.myshopify.com or whatever the fuck it is and click on the non practicing merchandise section for all this fantastic merchandise from Magic Chan posters to puzzles. Breaking Baldo glasses and mugs, the Don't Do Anime shirt, Breaking Baldo shirt, and the Bitchin' Breaking Baldo hat, available now for purchase with a 10% off discount 
if you're a new user who signs up. Again, that's medicare.myshopify.com, non-practicing merchandise. All right, let's return to Nick talking about making money off my death. Because <laughs> turnabout is fair play. Damn it, I, I don't care if you live or die. You're like an anime dungeon or whatever. There's all sorts of hentai in it. All of us would do that. All of us would do that. Except, except we would never admit it. We would just put it on your supple, uh, leprosy riddled shoulders. Where your arm fell off. Your arm fell off. Like, I know you're mid jerk, but your arm, like the leprosy pervaded your shoulder, your arm fell off. <laughs> You wouldn't have to try as hard on my shoulders. Don't get me wrong. It's a little bit. We call that in the, the, the book writing world, a little bit of foreshadowing. Where he's talking about arms falling off from jerking off. You'll see what I mean later on in this stream. And like falling down like uh, forearm and upper arm or whatever. That just did it. That just did it. And I know. But like the leprosy severed of that. I would crowdfund every amount of hat I can. To just get your leprosy riddled arm back on your supple <laughs> uh, Detroit transgender youth at a camp's body, also Jewish. I like how he sets up. Is there? It's a you know. I it's like these interactions with men on the internet leave me a little befuddled. Um, Coach Red Pill, really, and there are video of him saying this, treated me like a father figure, even though he's older than I am. Um, he compared me to his dad. And then Ethan Ralph went on a like a, a 20 minute spiel talking about my Jake Gyllenhaal muscles. And now Nick Ricade is talking about how supple my body is. I don't know what this weird shit is, uh, but it keeps happening. Just kidding, Jim. I'm I'm literally just kidding. Honestly, I don't I don't give a shit who fucking makes fun of me. I really don't. I hope you live. A million more milliseconds or whatever. And dude, seriously, get get healthy. Do what you need to do to get healthy. I don't fucking care about this internet shit. It's so stupid. Get what you need to do to get healthy. You're in Minnesota. You're dealing with the same communism as I am. Now on to me. Because Jim is an unimportant little faggot wallowing over there. Like, oh, I'm dying. I've got terminal illnesses or whatever. Like, yeah, that's good. Would you die already so we can grift off your death? Oh, I'm going to do my Medicare stream where I make fun of somebody for 24 hours. Like, uh, Jim, will you just die already? Will you just die? <laughs> why won't you die, Medicare? Jim. Jim, why won't you die in a million milliseconds with your supple Jake Gyllenhaal muscles? Die. Please, dear Christ, let me tell the world how Black Lagoon is the same as Andy Worski looking to PPP's asshole. Like, will you just do that? And I can cough like three times an hour for you? Or would, I have cancer rates. <coughs> <coughs> like, I can just do that. I have a wife named Jade or what? I don't even know. The Jade thing always makes me laugh because I think of the Charles Bronson movies where he hates Asians. So I'm like, yeah, every woman in those movies are named Jade. Why wouldn't Medicare be married to Jade? I don't know. But legitimately, please live. Please, please live so we can throw you off a snow covered balcony next year. You can die or whatever. I don't care. Like, I'll throw you into Tim Walls's butthole. I just love, you know, have you ever been around somebody that's like really shit faced? I mean, they're like, really? They're beyond three sheets of the wind. They're at 20 sheets at this point. And it's like a, a flow of consciousness where you don't really, like, they're going for, they, they have like a joke or a premise they're going with, but it like melds into other things. And it's just, it's word vomit. <laughs> it's word vomit. And they're totally into it. And you're just, it's almost like, it's you're, you're just watching it, like almost stunned fascination, like a documentary. Waiting to hear like some old British man talk about it like he's watching lions and leopards in a pack or some shit. Or Jacob Frey, the mayor of Minneapolis. Do you know what I pay? Jim, please. Pretend to be a child. So I can donate to Make-A-Wish. Just to have you learn black. By the way, I had a fucking killer joke for that that he never addressed. I don't think he did. When he said, Jim, pretend to be a child in chat, 
I, 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 in chat, I had commented and said, I don't know with Vito around if I feel comfortable pretending to be a child. And uh, never, he never picked up on that one. It was killer. It was gold. Should have mined that one. People dancing from Jacob Frey and record it. That's all I want to do. And my life is literally, I want to watch you learn from Mayor Jacob Frey how to dance like black people. And I want Jacob Frey to learn from you how to not get raped by a gay Cuban. I've... I don't know if I want to pretend to be a child with Vito oh, and Chet. Oh, there we go. Oh no, you can't be a child with Vito and Chet. Vito is, Vito is barred from this chat. He cannot be within 500 internets of this chat. Because if he does, he might find a minor. And if Vito finds a minor on the internet, he literally fucks the CD-ROM drive because he doesn't have a new computer. He fucks the CD-ROM drive until his dick runs Jewish and it circumcises him again. <laughs> I think that was Nick Rikanis saying that Vito is a, uh, uh, a Jewish pedophile. <laughs> Feel free to clip that one, send it on to Vito. I did this wrong. There's no innocence here and you know it. Jim's basically a baby. It's true. Nick, what the fuck are you talking about? Vito being a pedophile, monograph being a pedophile, Medicare being dead from cancer AIDS, legal vices being Korean. How is this hard? You've been like, did you piss out your bladder? No, I only pissed for a very short amount of time. What I do the rest of the time is between me and you. Medicare, you want to come on? We come on my face or whatever? God damn it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hold on. God damn it. What's what? What the? See, Medicare, do you want to come on my face? What's the next level chat beyond a thruple? What would four people be? What would we call? Is that a cruple? Quadruple, so it's a, a quadruple couple, a, a a cruple, a crippled cruple. Is he? She's trying to invite me to become part of the crippled cruple. I'm not sure. I hate these fucking Korean chefs. Why don't you just give us sushi? Would Koreans call sushi if they were Japanese? Sushi. Everybody's fucking losing their minds. It's okay. Guys, I'm fine. Oh, my goodness. Jim, by the way, how long do you have left to live, Jim? Seriously, I want to know. Because I've had this dream of going to your house, just sitting outside, like, petting your roses or whatever. <laughs> hey, bro. Uh, when are you going to die so I can come over to your house and pet your roses? I think he's really pushing for that crupple. I think he's real. Is this how he sweet-talked Aaron and April into it? Hey, Aaron, when are you going to die? By the way, ever get your dick sucked by a dude? <laughs> is, that how he, is that how he snuck in those DMs, Aaron? Do you have flowers? I don't know. Where you live doesn't beget flowers. Uh, petting, petting your, uh, whatever your perennials are. Then your perineum. Like, oh, God, Jim, I just want you to live through this. Will you please have an enlarged prostate, but then get over it? And you're like, no, Nick, I can't. COVID has got me. I called government at first. I told them that COVID was going to kill millions of people, and then it did. And I'm like, Jim, the elderly aren't people. Neither are blacks. And you're like, no, no, but that's who they killed. So it killed, it killed old people and black people. And I'm like, well, there aren't old black people, so those are white people. And then he killed black people. And you're like, I'm like, Jim, why are you so scared? And you're like, I have COPD of the vagina or whatever. I'm, I'm just as lost yet watching this the second time as I was listening to it live. But boy, was it entertaining. <laughs> I, I don't like if talking about like Mayor Frey and gay Cubans moving into petting roses and then COPD of the vagina and COVID. I don't know where we're going with it, but I'm I'm on board. I just want to, like, I just don't want to die from Governor Tim Walls. Jim, I will protect you. 
I will put my mouth, buttocks, whatever it is, over your fragile, sensitive vagina. I'll save you from that. But your skin isn't going to give you COVID, and I didn't have COVID. What am I? Jewish? I don't have COVID. Come to your house, sit around in your front yard until you come out because you can't stop me anymore. I'm just sitting there meditating over tea or whatever. Like Jim will come. If I don't build it, Jim will come. You come out and you're like, what are you going to build there, champ? I'm like, I don't know, slugger. Can I call you a slugger? Because I think I'm older than you. But if I'm not, you look younger than me because you look like you're dying. I want to build a movie theater for you, Jim, to just play Charlie Brown movies for the rest of your life. It's probably going to be two or three minutes. I want that to happen. And we just have us have a good time. Why? You know, the, the funniest thing I find about this is like when you get this shit face drunk, it's, it's you know, like you're on a stream, you're doing this. Like you can't turn it off. So what you're hearing right now, this pure insanity of just the stream of consciousness that's hard to follow, is probably what the whole family heard around the fucking breakfast table the next morning. <laughs> like, this is the shit. They, they probably had no idea what they were sitting down to. Like, Mom, why is Dad talking about petting roses? What the fuck is going on? I should, uh, a movie theater, Charlie Brown. Mom, I'm scared. And who is that blonde woman, and why is she K-holing at the breakfast table? She should be in the slave quarters. Why is it so hard? You're like, but I'm in St. Louis Park. You're not. I know. That's a joke. I'm in St. Louis Park. That's where all the Jews are. Hey, Jim, how much gold do you have? He's like, enough to mortgage 12 houses. But because they're Jews, 24 houses. 3.5% to maybe 12%. Jim, don't do it. Instead, instead, I need you to go. I need you to go to the Mayo Clinic. Hand him a jar of Hellman's and say, please, gentlemen, save me. Save me. Here's Hellman's. Put it on the back of the bread. Put it on a sandwich. Put it on, oh, God. <laughs> you know, I want to take a moment. Uh, many people don't know this, but Nick Rakita actually is a stand-up comedian. <laughs> He's done stand-up comedy. Uh, interestingly enough, I think it was for the guy whose wife he ended up fucking. Uh, so let's let's see. Um, stand-up comedy. Future career? Question mark? Uh, yes or no? Let's start that poll. How supportive are we, Chad? Come on. I'm thinking we've got the next Jerry Seinfeld here. I'm thinking syndicated TV. Maybe an HBO special. Sometime on Netflix. How much would you pay to get in for this? Well, what's the what's the top dollar amount you'd be paying to get in for this? Somebody chat, good old L.A. comedy. That's one way of putting it. I think I found the next career after uh, after uh, uh, the law, stand-up comedy. Just get totally shit-faced drunk and talk nonsense about mining gold and petting roses. Classic Seinfeld. What about the airline peanuts? Uh, Tim Frey's fucking Cuban men. <laughs> I don't fucking know what's going on. Put it on a soup. Chicken wings. I don't care. I just need the Hellman's mayonnaise to keep me sustained. Jim, I'm kidding. Seriously, dude. Also, do you notice... He's drinking out of two completely different glasses nonstop for the last 10 minutes. He had the giant fancy mug and then the glass whiskey. Uh, and just banging them both back nonstop, just, just downing them. Get well, have fun, make fun of me all you want. I don't care. Oh, you heard him. You fucking heard him. That's permission. I have permission for this stream. I love you, man. You introduced me to Montograph. You cost me all this money. <laughs> You're the fucking, uh, you're the fucking guy who did this to me. I will forever, never forgive you. Okay, so remember when I sh when I started this segment off by by showing you those archives and clearing up a few things. Hey, you know, let's just let's just rewind that for a few seconds. I need you to go to the Mayo Clinic. Hand him a jar of Hellman's and say, "Please, gentlemen, save me." Save me. Here's Hellman's. 
put it on the back of the bread, put it on a sandwich, put it on, oh God, put it on a soup, chicken wings. I don't care. I just need the Hellman's mayonnaise to keep me sustained. Jim, I'm kidding. Seriously, dude. Get well. Have fun. Make fun of me all you want. I don't care. I love you, man. You introduced me to Montograph. You cost me all this money. <laughs> you're the fucking uh, you're the fucking guy who did this to me. I will forever never forgive you. Like when you finally die and they bury you in the ground, I'm gonna go find your corpse. I'm gonna dig you out. I'm gonna donate to you to the U of M and I'm gonna say, Oh no, this is a Muslim whose suicide vest didn't go off. Can we put it back on him and send him into Israel? He wants to blow my corpse up because of the Montegraff lawsuit. You know what I find funny is? Remember when Ralph got super shit-faced? Uh, I know, talking about Ralph, why would you do that? Who is that guy again? You're right. Uh, but remember when he got super drunk? Just just shit-faced blasters like, Nick Ricada told me it was okay to come on your gra Nick Ricada said I could masturbate on your gravestone. And now here's Nick drunk, openly talking. What is it they say? Um, sober thoughts or drunken words? Talking about wanting to dig my corpse up and desecrate it? I almost wonder if he really did tell Ralph it was okay to come on graves. And we will FedEx that motherfucker to Israel. His name will be Muhammad Allah, who, um, I don't know, Boba T or whatever. I'll put the vest on him. Say, go in peace. Find your 72 virgins. And that man will flow right into Israel. He will blow up in town square. He'll kill probably two or three Jews. No Jewish women because they keep them for the calendars. They don't put them on the front lines. And then, and then, only then will he go back to Muslim heaven. He will find, oh my God, 72 World of Warcraft players. And all of them play Warlock. And they're all like, please, 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 don't bend me over, keep me standing. Because that's how I like it. Does anybody know what the fuck he's talking about? Like we have, I'm, I'm amazed that he can sit straight up. If I got drunk to this point, I wouldn't even be coherently saying words. They'd just be sounds coming out of my mouth. Be like wind. If people would think I was whistling. How drunk is that asshole? He's whistling over there. How many Bacardi 151s has he had? Nick's just pounding back glass after glass of whiskey, going on about <laughs> digging up graves and putting suicide vests on them. Like, I, what the fuck is this? And Jim would be like, "Why is I didn't I didn't do the suicide bombing?" And I'll call hell myself, and I'll be like, "Hey, by the way, Jim, I did this. I did this to you, but I'll buy a hat." <laughs> I'm kidding. God damn it! <laughs> uh, Bob Smith says, "Nick, or I don't care how drunk." I don't care how drunk he is. Who gives a fuck? And he said, buy two hats. Do you have one that comes in yarmulke? I need that for my circumcised penis. Literally, I... The chat doesn't know. You do know. I love Medicare. He's a guy I grew up watching. Grew do you see what I mean by how weird this is? I think Nick is 42. He's like one year younger than I am. You grew up watching me. We're the same age. I grew up being, I was 30. Like, because we don't grow up in our teens anymore. We grow up when we're 30 or whatever. And Jim's out here making fun of people. And I'm like, oh, God, I, I used to make fun of people, too. I can do this. He's doing that. And now Jim's making fun of me. And I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. Prescient. Good. I'm going to keep doing it because I want more. I want him to, I want him to stay alive. I don't have to like do that thing where he travels around the mall and they have that treadmill and the black guy running on it. They're like, see if you can keep up with the black guy and the police officers get on there and they just fall over and over. But like the one Mexican gets on there, the black guy has a green card in his hand. The Mexican overtakes him every time. He's like, oh, I will shingle your roof or whatever. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And he just chases him down. I want Jim to have one of those with his wheelchair with Bill Gates, like where he's just so you know, chat. Um, we're now officially one third of the way through 
this portion of the stream. There's 25 more minutes of this amazing comedy bit. <laughs> so uh, he wants to dig me up because of the monograph thing, uh, blow me up, uh, gay Cubans somehow, uh, hang out on my lawn, something about Hellman's mayonnaise repeatedly. Uh, now wants me on a treadmill, running from the police like a black man. I I don't know what this conversation is. It's charming. It's fun to watch as a outside observer. There's nothing more entertaining than a drunk man being drunk. But do you know what's not entertaining? Being the drunk man's kid at the breakfast table? That's not entertaining. It's funny for everybody else. But not when you, he's your daddy, Nick. It's a, it's a great show for the audience, but probably fucking terrifying for a kid. I don't know. Sitting on Bill Gates' lap, just like rolling 12 miles an hour. He's like, I've got super buff arms. I don't. Jim's arms are way better than mine. And then you think about it and you're like, oh my God. If this man were in Hiroshima, he would need a fucking handicap ramp to survival. They didn't even have those. They didn't even have those. They they flash images of Japos on the wall. They put them into dust and made them into pudding for Dr. Phil or whatever. You're know, like, oh, God, what would Jim have done there? Like, no, he wouldn't have done that. He would have been FDR. He would have been FDR. No, he would have been an American president in his wheelchair. He would have rolled up. They would have died and left it to Eisenhower to solve the goddamn problem of the Japanese. Eisenhower created anime, Jim. You didn't. Why? Why did you lie to me? Why did you lie? You said you created anime. You're watching these big city anime bitches. No. No, no, no. You created the interstate highway system. Now, I know. I put a little bit of a damper. A damper on you, chat, as we're watching this. And I'm not going to moral fang. I'm not going to sit here on a high horse and make... Uh, you know, all these flowery statements about responsibility. But I just want you to, in the back of your head, just kind of keep that in mind. As we're watching this, it's funny. It is funny to listen to him ramble. I was entertained listening to him ramble. But that alcohol takes a while to get out of your system. And if you're doing that every fucking night, if you're doing drugs every fucking night, if you're screwing whores every fucking night, the people that are exposed to it at the breakfast table are the ones that aren't going to understand it. And they're not going to find it funny. So think about that, you know, the difference of proximity here as you as the outside observer and uh, the people that would be on the inside watching this. And just ask yourself how funny it would be. How funny it would be to have daddy drive you to school. How funny it would be to have daddy talk like this at the breakfast table. Or be in a bad mood because the shit's coming out of his system. Or how funny it would be uh, daddy doesn't have time to hang up because he's got to fuck a whore in your house. You created legal drinking age of 21. You created everything wrong with America. You tried to give it to FDR, but it was, it was Eisenhower. Eisenhower is you. You're like, oh, I have a wheelchair too. No, you didn't. You didn't, Jim. You didn't have a wheelchair. You had internet access and a time machine. And you went back. You dropped the bomb on the Japanese. Thank you, by the way. You should have done more. But you didn't. Instead, you left karaoke bars. Sushi. What the fuck is wrong with you? Big booty bitches. Like knocking themselves. Like animated ones. Because no Japanese women have an ass. They don't have an ass because they don't matter. Because Japanese men just want a hand. Hand up, hand out. Just like communists. They're like, oh, wait. I can do this. And then their hand becomes a futanari. Have you seen? I know you know this. Their hand, a slit opens up here like in Vampire Hunter D. And instead of a mouth, an intelligible conversation, a giant black cock comes out. And I do like that he knows at Vampire Hunter D about the, the hand with the mouth on it. Uh, he does watch anime. There's no way he'd know that if he you know, was completely unfamiliar with it. I'd replay the goon clip, but I've really milked that for about all it's worth. <laughs> I can't go back to it. But we're like halfway through, 15 minutes into this, and I'm so lost, I don't know what the fuck he's... Remember, this is going over the fact he lost the appeal, <laughs> or Rendeza, I should say lost the appeal, because Rendeza's representing him, uh, to Monty, in his civil case. 
This is him talking about civil litigation for saying wild shit online. And during this fucking stream, uh, he talks shit about Monty again, which I'm sure Randazza loves. I'm sure he's fucking thrilled with that. Like, this is Elizabeth Warren. They, then they die fucking themselves. And you're like, no, this is good. I'm like, Jim, no, no. Why would you create anime? No, 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 please nuke them again. Please nuke the Japanese again. Just tell me it's a campfire. You're like, what? We don't the right a campfire. I'm like, no, no, no. Keep your paper wall, rice paper, it's even worse. Keep your rice paper wall structures. I hope your government buildings are rice paper too. The North Koreans at least learn how to use concrete. But again, ask the Chinese how you give birth. They'll tell you the men behind the sun, right? Or whatever. They'll bind your legs and they'll... Do you, like, what the fuck is he talking about? I, I, don't, I can't, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like, try to follow, it's really difficult. It's funny, but it's really hard to follow. Oh, oh, sorry there, chat. For a second there, OBS freaked out on me for a second. I think it got secondhand intoxication. Based on the stream, we got a little tipsy there for a moment. They call the baby retarded because it looks Vietnamese, and they will just kill you. And no, you sit there and you're gonna be like, "No, we want to create anime. We'll we'll create Japan. Japan will be better with anime and Tom Cruise." Stop! No, 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 no! Don't do it! Don't do it! Remember that Rollerball movie where James Conn killed Japanese people with his bare fucking hands? That's what we need. That would stop anime. A nuke doesn't stop anime. Bare fucking hands of James Conn, he'll kill every anime motherfucker on the planet. He can team up with Charlie's Bron uh, Charlie Bronson in Kinjite. He's like, I don't need your kimono-wearing motherfucking slant-eyed ass. Yeah, somebody in chat is like, is he in a loop? Are we watching somebody in a loop? A little bit. A little bit. You know how uh, Ralph would say any loop? Hey, you, you find somebody with like a substance abuse issue where they uh, imbibe a little too much alcohol, they're doing a little too many pills, they're doing whatever it is they're doing. Uh, they find themselves in these mental loops where it's almost like uh, they've gone delirious, right? They've completely disconnected. Like you, you'd be like, this could be a story that you'd watch on what's that YouTube channel? Um, uh, Trip report, you know, where the guy reads off everybody getting fucked up off some substance a little too much on the dangers of alcohol would be, would be this a 30 minute episode on this fucking portion of the stream. He's just kind of looping in and out and flowing with the consciousness, and it's really hard to keep track. So we're going to fast forward a little bit, because <laughs> it's pure insanity, because we have so many clips to get through. And this is just the Hey Jim portion of it, which is about 30 minutes. The dialysis center, and all their kids are the fucking daycare that I went to. I went to that daycare. It's America's Choice Daycare, West, Little, or West Gulf Bank in Little York, by the way. Look it up all you want. It's great. And then you're like, why do I have less representation in my vote? We couldn't vote yet. We were children. Why do I have less representation in kickball than the Indian kids? One of them is a sniper. I didn't even know what to do with her. I didn't know they respected women. I wanted to tie her to a bed and light her on fire like every other Jew, uh, not Jewish, uh, Indian man. Bob's and Vagine are all that matters. Everything else is just embers. So I, I think he's saying he wanted to go to a daycare and light one of the children on fire. I, am I misinterpreting that? I wanted to go to the daycare and take one of the little girls who's a sniper and tire to the bed and light her on fire. We're so down where this is like two whiskey bottles deep at this point <laughs> where the stories are getting dangerous to be telling. And ashes of a bed. And then I'm like looking at the, the other fucking Indian kid. And I'm like, how is math so easy for you? Why is that? He goes, oh, because my name means garbage. And the only thing I can do is climb the economic ladder. But if I can't detail what the ladder means, I don't know how to climb it. Like, are you that guy from Slumdog Millionaire? He goes, yes. It'll be released in 15 years. Please watch it. I won't. I won't. Slumdog Millionaire is like the movie Alive. Now, I want to take a moment to pause it here and just reiterate something. This was a guy at one point that had a viewing audience of 100,000 plus people watching him on a live stream. Crazy numbers. Bigger than I've ever come close to. 
uh, bigger than the biggest people on Twitch do. Like, yeah, there are streamers out there that'll hit really, really absurd numbers. But, like, he was he was up there. 100,000 plus people watching him. He could turn, uh, turn a stream on and have a ton of people watching him. Now here he is, drunker than you can imagine, probably on something else, maybe, allegedly, potentially, streaming to an audience of maybe 2,000 people on YouTube, talking incoherently about shit. Look at the disparity between that. How do you go from an audience of 100,000 people making five to six figures a month in Super Chats to streaming at midnight about a lawsuit you're losing, drunk off your ass, incoherently talking to an audience of maybe 2,000, of which maybe three or four people have donated the entire time because they pity you. What the fuck happened in the span of two years? What other than than giving in to your vices and letting them fucking control you? Like, oh, there's a soccer team crash on a mountain. I hope they eat each other and die. Some dark millionaire. I'm like, I hope he dies too. Same movie. So here we are. I'm like, Medicare, why don't you just die in front of all the Asians and you could at least eat garden animals or house animals or whatever? He's like, no. I'll die on my own terms. But you talk too much, Jim. You make hats. You make souffles or whatever, like a French faggot. You're sitting out here like, and we will make a souffle out of a gym speech. So we need tarragon and saffron. And like Jeff Garipe cooks his wife better than you can. And everything <laughs> I know. That's a bit of a banger. That's a bit of, I got to give it to him. That was, that was a good one. As far as the stand-up routine goes. It's a little mean, you know, because Jeff's wife, is lo- she's still technically lost in those woods. But, you know, it's, it's a fucking good one. In this world. Is that Rumble should have given you a contract that says this is like a reverse mortgage, but we're not taking the home. Oh, I see some people in chat are a little confused. That's my fault. Maybe you're not familiar with uh, people in the sector. Um, Jeff Gierpe is a right wing commentator who was on a podcast with Andy Warsky for a while, went off and did his own political commentary and uh, was in a relationship with a mentally handicapped woman. We're talking full on spuds here. Super potato. And he is sexually attracted to that. So he's very happy. She was in the relationship with him. Everything seemed lovey dovey. Um, and then one day he drove her to the woods and just let her run free. <laughs> um, and I'm not making that up. That's what he told the police. She disappeared from the face of the earth and he said, You know what? I took my retarded wife to the woods and let her out of the car and said, Go live free in nature now. And nobody's seen her for like a year now. So that's who JF Garapia is for those in chat wondering. From your kids, we're taking the home from your wife in the hopes that she doesn't parallel park it in the Pacific Ocean. Medicare says, I've had tarts in a long. I can't imagine how many electronics kids they end up destroying by just using them. Jim, five children. Pretend they're all rich. You know, like billion, they're not, but pretend they're all billionaire rich because their children and children are stupid. What they do is they're like, oh yeah, I can have another one. Like when Leonardo DiCaprio looks at a Victoria's Secret model, he's like, yeah, I got one. I can have another. Your kids look at your iPad, their iPads. They're their iPads that they're ruining. You know, yeah, I can fix this. No, you can't. You tell me you can't fix this. No, I can. <laughs> Okay, that was the uh, that was the hey Jim part of the stream. We're still nowhere near done. Uh, we've started at seven; it's now ten. We're we've, we're going into hour four. I told you it would be a bit of a longer one, but it's going to get crazier because what he does next on this stream actually realistically hurts him in his civil trial and his upcoming criminal trial. And you're not going to believe what he does. It's fucking insane. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna come back again. Another break. It's ten o'clock. Take one more break. Uh, and when we come back, you're gonna. This is fucking lunacy. You're gonna. Oh, God, there's so much shit to go over. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, we're gonna come back with a tale of Ricky Rackets, the Rail King.
because now he's done with the Dear Jim portion of the stream, where he's going to you know, <laughs> dig me up and put a suicide vest on me. And now we're going to get into him talking about the judge. And then we get to file a motion for Oh, some boy. That's what I'm talking about. It's time to talk about nothing ever goes better for somebody involved in civil or criminal litigation than talking about the judge overseeing the hearings. Uh, but next up is catastrophe. Like, this is such a bad decision. This is such a horrific decision. I can only imagine his lawyer was somehow alerted to this and was watching it like, oh, fuck. What do you, well, you know, to be fair, with Roy Dess, I probably charges. He's probably like, keep doing it. Oh, yeah, no, insult the judge more. Because then I get more money representing you. Please, actually, have another drink. You know what? I've changed my mind. I bet Red Dazza was cheerleading him on. <laughs> he was cheerleading him on on this. So let's see what our boy Ricky Rackets the Rail King has to say about, about the judge. And then we get to file a motion for summary judgment after discovery because the judge, Jennifer Fisher, yes, like the office, decided that you needed to have discovery. The only fact, the only fact outstanding on discovery was Montegraff's alleged damages. I don't know why we need those. I don't know why Montegraff needs those. But that's the thing that was standing out. Everything else was there. Our judge is literally fucking stupid. We're going to say it. Jennifer Fisher, chief judge of Wilmer, Minnesota, Candy, Ohio County, is touched. Not by an angel, not even by a priest, but probably by retardation. She does not know. So it's a good start. Let's start off by saying that our judge is a fucking retard. Make sure to name her explicitly and the district she serves in. So she knows you're explicitly talking about her. And then explain how fucking retarded she is. Basic facts or elements of common law. She doesn't know Minnesota statutory law. When she tries to apply the law to facts, and I know this from previous cases with her, by the way, she gets it wrong. I love it. He's like, not only is she fucking retarded in my case, but I've worked with this retard. Let me tell you how fucking retarded this retarded water brain is. And you know, it's crazy. I know what people are going to say. Those cases that I had in front of Jennifer Fisher, the chief judge of Candy, Ohio County, when she applied basic common law principles on contract, incorrect. She applied because she said, I can do whatever I want, basically. She was not, at that point, judging in the district court. She was judging at the small claims court level. She said, no, that's not how contracts work. I'm like, judge, that's how contracts have worked for 450 years. You don't get to just change that. Like, we win. Guess what happened? We won the next time we got to the hearing. Because like any boring, stereotypical woman, they will sit there and tell you why you're wrong over and over and over again. But lo and behold... Yeah, so this uh, stupid fucking whore that wears, uh, wears this little fruity uh, black thing, she's got a little gavel on it, thinks she has power. Dumb bitch. Uh, well, this stupid whore, or as a dog, as Coach Red Pill, Chef Red Pill would tell us, thought she had power over me, but I, I waved my dick at her. I'm like, hey, bitch, I'm Ricky Rackets the Rail King. I don't know what the fuck's going on here, but you little retarded ass needs to get the fuck off that bench and lay down, bada boom, you know what I mean? Spread those legs, honey. Oh, I don't want to hear no law officiating. I want you to suck this dick. If you just wait a day, they'll come around to your thing and go, you know what? You said I, I said you were wrong, but you weren't wrong. I just really love the taste of liquor being squeezed out of my vagina. And then they drink it. And then they do whatever. Yeah. Squeezing liquor out of the vagina. Now, let me just time code this. 216. Okay. I have only once in my life seen somebody say something like this to a judge. Only once. And I'm not talking about insane people that are high on meth in the fucking, you know, holding cell at the local jail. I'm talking full-on schizo shit. Would you like to know who said something similar to squeezing out pussy juice to a fucking judge? Would you like to know the one person I've ever encountered that's done that? You might be familiar with him. A little guy by the name of Francis E. Declan Esquire III? Not even, they didn't have alphabets, not even numerals. 
Send an automatic typewriter today. Yeah, that guy. Well, he was a prolific writer, and he hated the legal system. So one day, Francis decided to write a judge and explain to him that his wife was a fucking whore. And it's so close to what, what Nick is saying, it's spooky. Just uh, take a listen. As additional evidence, during the last week of my within-mentioned month-long, worse-than-a-farce Nazi court criminal trial in Nassau County Court, 1958, where dwarfed felon gangster parroting puppet rectum lapper sodomist Judge William Sullivan's ball of fat felon slot wife, she, as planned, sat in the front row, repeatedly stripping her overclothes and completely pulling up her dress and slip and pulling aside her old-fashioned pink bloomers in order to display her anus, her conch. She repeatedly gesticulated and whispered, I'll give it to you to suck. Finish him. <laughs> I'll give it to you to suck. I have to hear that again. This is what Nick Ricada sounds like to Judge Jennifer Fisher. This is what she hears in her head. What he's going on. As additional evidence, during the last week of my within-mentioned month-long, worse-than-a-farce Nazi court criminal trial in Nassau County Court, 1958, where dwarfed felon gangster parroting puppet rectum lapper sodomist Judge William Sullivan's ball of fat felon slot wife, she, as planned, sat in the front row, repeatedly stripping her overclothes and completely pulling up her dress and slip and pulling aside her old-fashioned pink bloomers in order to display her anus, her conch. She repeatedly gesticulated and whispered, I'll give it to you to suck. Finish him. I love that this is like Nick's legal strategy. Like Nick is, Nick is literally, his legal strategy, he's sitting down with Randazzo who charges $40 billion an hour. And he's like, I got it, bro. I'm going to go full Francis E. Declan Esquire on this bitch. I got it, buddy. I'm going to teach this slut a lesson. Gesticulating her cunt. Telling me to lick it. That's brilliant. That's going to go over so well in court, buddy. And then we get to file them. So well. And then they drink it. And then they do whatever. And I'm just sitting here going, most of the judges in Candy, Ohio County are men. How are they going to squeeze vagina liquor into my mouth? I don't want them to. But my I told you. I fucking told you. It's Francis E. Declan Esquire. Gesticulating her cunt trying to get me to lick it. Is that Galifianakis? Am I Barack Obama? Am I Joe Biden? No. I do not want man juice in my mouth. So I go, can you just apply the fucking law? Can you just apply the fucking law? And when they do, they go, holy shit. It supports Nick's client. Here's the thing. I'm not a good lawyer. I didn't win because... <laughs> There's never been... Dude. Dude. There has never been a more truthful statement that you have uttered today than that. Why would you think getting shit-faced drunk and then telling the judge overseeing your civil litigation that uh, she is a retarded slut who, who leaks pussy juice in the courtroom... What the fuck were you thinking? Because I came up with a novel legal legal argument. Literally, my clients have good cases. And I go, this person didn't hire that person. They hired someone else. Talked to someone else. Hi person A did not hire person C. Person A hired person B. Person B quit. Person C sues person A. Person C is not in the company of person B. The court's like, well... Why are you there? Like, because these people are working on my house. It should be simple. But why are you there? Why are you in? Why are you in town? Why are you fighting this? I don't know. Freedom matters. My rights matter. If you don't fight the government, they get to just say whatever they want. This is prosecutors, guys. Let me take, let me take another sip. Maybe I'll have some more uh, brilliant legal positioning to do. Oh, well, you know, have, a, have another, have another little sip, and then tell the judge about her leaky pussy. This retard with her leaky pussy. I'll see you in court on Monday, Your Honor. Try not to slip and slide. Put out a a wet floor sign when you're walking by, you stupid whore. <laughs> what? I just why. Why would you do this, Nick? Why would you ever do this? Why would you ever go on on a live stream and do this? <laughs> what compelled you to think this was a smart decision? Holy shit, bro. Now, 
I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But the reason this is particularly funny is the name of the judge, Judge Fisher. And I'm, I'm almost 100% certain, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That after he was brought up on charges, I'm, again, I'm skipping ahead, the judge that will oversee his criminal trial, can you guess, Jet? Can you guess who the judge is who's going to oversee his criminal trial? Take a wild guess at who got assigned Ricky Rackets or Rail King's possession and weapons charges trial. If you guessed the woman he just called a uh, retarded whore whose pussy leaks everywhere, uh, you guessed correctly. Not only does he have a civil case before uh, her honor, he also has his fucking legal case, his criminal cocaine case, in front of the woman he just spent five minutes calling a dumb whore. <laughs> Imagine the joy on her face. Imagine the cartwheels she's going to do through the courtroom when Ricky Racket Sorrell King walks in. Because she's seen this. There's no way she hasn't seen this. When, she, when he walks in that fucking courtroom and she just looks at him like, oh, oh, do you have a case before me, the retarded whore? Oh, I'm sorry. Try not to slip on my pussy juice. What the fuck? This outclasses anything Ralph has ever done. Ralph Ralph has done some dumb shit in court. But like this is this is next level gamesmanship. This is 4D chess. This is like this is some Donald Trump orange man shit. What are you what the fuck am I looking at? We're underwater scuba diving poloing this shit. My best legal strategy is to call her a stupid whore. That's going to get the cocaine charges dropped. Oh, my God. Uh, we got more. So after the gym stuff and uh, after telling the judge that she's a dumb whore, he, of course, has to circle back to Monty because we still got that, you know, civil trial going. Let's make sure we fuck that one up, too. I want everybody to remember the first time I talked about Montograph was when Jim, Mr. Medicare, Asked me to come on his show and talk about Montegraff losing a defamation lawsuit against someone calling him a pedophile. That is true. Uh, Montegraff had lost a defamation suit, or he lost a lawsuit against a guy. And I brought on uh, Nick, because Nick was the online lawyer guy, and I wanted to know what he thought. Like, what are, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on this guy and uh, how he won this, this trial against Montegraff? Because Montegraff wasn't able to intelligibly defend himself from being called a pedophile. And so he lost the case. The guy who called Montegraff a pedophile won the case. And so when Jim introduces me to this guy, he's like, by the way, here's this guy. He just lost a lawsuit for defamation claiming people were calling him a pedophile and it was defamatory. He's like, no! And I'm like, gross. I don't know why I would believe it. Who knows? Um, oh, here's the exhibit in Exhibit 1 DVD. Defendant, with his face and voice, accuses the plaintiff of being a pedophile. The live stream broadcast occurred on April 6, 2019, from the defendant's Blackstone Intelligence Network YouTube channel. The defendant falsely accused the plaintiff of pedophilia a number of times during that live stream. Over 4,500 people heard and saw the video, which triggered this very lawsuit. So this mm. is his, his follow-up, I guess, because the first one made no sense. And he's trying to... Uh, this is more specific? Is that specific enough? No. I mean, uh, it's it's not going to be su su uh, specific enough to overcome the jurisdiction problems because he would have to prove that he had directed the the acts towards Colorado. Um, what he, If he really wanted to sue him, he would have to sue him in federal court uh, or in state court in in North Carolina or wherever the uh, defendant actually is, where they'd have jurisdiction over him. That's the biggest hurdle he's got. Um, what what page were you reading that on? Six, you said? Um, oh, yeah. So or, if it, it's the 11-page document, the response. Um, it's yeah. the second page, plaintiff's answer. It says Exhibit 1 DVD. Oh. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, it's from the paragraph where it says, See Quest Response to Morphonious Motion. Uh, and then the second page of that. It, it's just that one little oh, yeah. paragraph. There we go. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, and it, it wasn't uh, this. He's addressing other parts of the motion, but I got dismissed on jurisdictional grounds. So they didn't even get to this other this other stuff. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, he would have had to amend his pleadings rather than just answering in the motion. He could have requested that to the court. But I mean, this is why you get a lawyer, right? right. Uh, the the interesting thing is um, he he raises kind of a good argument on page three. There's one where it talks about he is a journalist uh, with with a standard of journalistic integrity. This is actually part of a defamation uh, cause of action. Where okay. is it? Uh, where you you argue that basically they. Um, Oh, is it the third paragraph? The defendant's introduction to this very lawsuit explicitly points out what a professional independent journalist the defendant is. Coupled, right, yes. Coupled with his investigational skills. I literally believe and affirm everything I've ever said about Montegraph. There you go. <laughs> Belief doesn't make it true. Poor, uh, poor man's gold PMG. It's not about what makes something true. It's about whether or not you reasonably would know it to be false. It just keeps going. Just keeps going. Uh, now, I can't speak to the civil suit. I don't know anything about this legal shit. I don't know how the lawsuit's going. But when the stream was put up, you know, it was about the appeal, and he lost the appeal. Monty got something out of it. And I talked to, you know, I'd asked Nick in the comments, like, how long is this going to take? Because it's been about, like, a year or two it's been going on. And he said, oh, it's going to be, you know, till October, till discovery's done. And then I think he said even a summary judgment could take up to three months. So you're looking at like February or March of 2025. So he's got another year of this to go on for the statements that he made two years ago, where uh, I guess Montegraph had shown up in the comment section. They had had some back and forth and, and Nick had dared him to sue him. He said, sue me, you know, uh, I, I, they called him a pedophile, said he fucked little boys and said, sue me if you have a problem with that. And Montegraph apparently sued him. Now, I don't know. <laughs> I, the whole Jim introduced me to this thing. That's the that's the introduction. We went over a, a legal case where somebody else got into it with Montegraph about a live stream he did that was weird. And the guy won because of some jurisdictional issue. I can't remember exactly. But the entire thing was Montegraph's high. This is the weird thing. Because even on that stream, I'd mentioned Montegraph is highly litigious and he likes to get into fights with everybody. So you'd think Nick would remember that portion of it, but he like he just threw the gauntlet down in 2020. And it's been ongoing now for two years with another year to go with a lawyer who probably charges an exorbitant amount of money. And while he's in that trial, he talks shit about the judge and then gets arrested for cocaine and weapon possessions. And there's a twist. There's a fucking twist, a dark twist that we're going to talk about at the very end of this in regards to Montegraph specifically. But before we get to that, we're going to cap it off from this Montegraph stream with the uh, the DSP moment, which was just very weird. People have analyzed this for multiple reasons. So I'm just going to play it. Uh, this was up on Eliza Clips. They clipped it out. Uh, so you'll see a little bit before, during, and after. And make your own judgment. Thoughts on DSP. DSP is invincible and invulnerable. I love him and I want to hold him. Like uh, Achilles' mom held him by the river and dipped him in the river Styx. I want to do that with DSP, but I want to use my, I want to use my penis in his butthole so there's no ambiguity. He'd be impervious forever. Imagine being Achilles' mom. Like, well, you have a choice. What is the choice? You can either hold him by the ankle, dip him in the stick, the river Styx. What's the other choice? The welfare choice is spread them cheeks, bitch. Some guy's going to pretend to nut you. And nut Yahoo, he's Israeli. He's Israeli. He'll father of your supporters. And that guy will win. Just do that. It's like, no. Why not? Chicago. Okay, cool. Fuck. Right now, DSP actually looks better than you. You got to be kidding me, man. Good. Guys, you don't understand. I literally like DSP. A few moments later, by sheer coincidence. Okay, the law. I, I want to share this on stream. Make Cantini, make Cantini is praised. Why would you do this? Why now? Uh, for those curious, because you're not going to see this on this clip, uh, a super chatter. I think it was, what was it? Anime sucks, uh, Sneed and Cope, or Cope and Sneed, some shit like that. And sent him um, some hentai. So he's looking at hardcore hentai right now.
why is my camera so on? Trying to shut the show down. I'm like, oh, we'll play the credits. No. What we'll do is we'll sit here. Guys, here's the credits. Oh my God, Nick's drunk. Yes. Cool. I'll do it at your uh, kid's family thing or whatever. Okay. Uh, so my take on this is I, I, I do honestly think he was trying to make a DSP joke about him jacking out. I'd like to think he was making just a DSP joke. Now, on the Kino Casino, they did like some audio analysis where they're hearing a belt buckle open and somebody under the table. Remember, he's got a corner demon. He'll look off into the corner occasionally. And uh, spoiler alert for everybody like, who's that corner demon? What's this corner demon shit? Well, remember, remember the third person in the mugshot. The speculation is it was our, uh, our babysitter here, April, uh, in the corner who slithered on over and was giving him a little uh, a little relief while he was doing his DSP bit. Now, uh, you can watch the Kino Casino has their episode up where they go over the uh, enhanced audio, <laughs> which is basically uh, just, just blasting it out. But I'm going to stick with it was an attempt at a joke, honestly. And then he's just like he was earlier, so drunk, it just, it comes off like he's actually, <laughs> actually masturbating or getting a knobber under the table. I, I will give him that. But this stream happens. And everybody sees this stream happen. And they're like, it's a fucking disaster. This is a, this is embarrassing, Nick. Like, you, you have to see how you look at this. this. This is terrible. Like, you understand that, right? And what happens? He gets arrested. Now, I could play the arraignment photo where he goes to his bail hearing. But if you listen to the beginning of those videos, the judge explicitly says, um, it is illegal to replay this. And I just, I don't want to deal with the trouble. See, Nick, how that works? I'm just going to avoid it rather than challenging somebody and say, sue me. I'm just going to sidestep it and not play it. Because I'm not like a accepted court reporter like all the other LawTube channels got themselves uh, 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 okayed as to play that. I'm just going to assume that I can't play it and just give them a play-by-play. -play. So Nick gets arrested. His wife gets arrested. The babysitter gets arrested. We went over a little bit of it. In fact, uh, there's a little more detail, I suppose, in uh, one of the other articles about this, because there was a Fox article that talked about it, but uh, also Alpha News, which is more like a, it's like a Minnesota-only kind of news source, kind of goes over it a little bit, uh, where they talk about him and his wife getting uh, arrested, uh, the child endangerment uh, stuff, the drug stuff, the weapon stuff. That's the one that talked about how it was you know, dirty in the house, the female juvenile not letting him in. You know, all this shit's going on. Uh, but they give specific measurements as to why he gets the charges he does. Uh, saying it included 26.67 grams, so over 25 grams of cocaine, uh, eight ketamine pills, digital scale, the IR, or AR rifle with the multiple magazines and spent shell casings. And then two credit cards belonging to the babysitter were in the bedroom along with other various drug paraphernalia and items that posited, uh, or tested positive. Uh, but it goes into some other crazy shit. I, I want to show you this picture again. Uh, where is it here? The mugshot picture. Remember how I said, oh, you know, his wife kind of looks like Dave. She's a little out of it. In the uh, Alpha News one, it talks a little bit about this. It says, at jail, uh, his wife requested her prescription medicine be brought to her. Upon inspection, jail staff found unknown pills and gummies that did not match the prescription on the container. So, was she trying to smuggle drugs into prison? Like, I'm misreading that, right? Like, his wife actually asked the fucking prison guards to smuggle drugs in? That's, that's too dumb. Like, she has to be, like, dazed and confused. I don't, or maybe she didn't know. Maybe Nick or April stashed some shit in there. But, like, unknown pills and gummies, which makes it sound like THC gummies. And you ask the jail staff to bring the drugs to you. It's a brave move. Uh, jail records also show April was booked into custody with the rackets, but she appears to have been released from custody without being charged. Yeah, fun fact. Um, when Nick went up for his bail hearing, which he got, uh, he said that he was going to represent himself, which, whatever. He, I mean, he's a lawyer, so he could he could do that. Non-practicing, from what I hear, but a lawyer. Um represent himself for the bail hearing. 
Uh, but then he stated to the court that he was also representing both April and his wife in legal proceedings and wanted to have time to talk to them, in which the judge or the bailiff or somebody in the courtroom tells him, oh, um, yeah, April's already gone. Yeah, she skedaddled. Yeah, she's out of there already. And apparently dropping DMs with everybody else. So when you told police that, you know, she wasn't in the bedroom and she was just a visitor, but her credit cards are found there, and now she's DMing people, um, saying that she did live there, and she got out of court ahead of everybody else with no charges, and didn't tell you or your wife about it, makes me think that she rolled over. Makes me think that she's going to testify for the state against you. How she was the innocent victim and um, innocent girl in her 20s who didn't know any better, and you got her hooked on the goofballs. And you and your wife uh, uh, got her so fucked up she didn't know what was going on. And sure, Mr. Prosecutor, I'll tell you whatever you need to know. Just like I'm telling every other fucking uh, podcast on the internet what's going on. So, Nick, potentially she's going to rat you out. And then on top of that, you told the judge she's a retarded uh, bitch that bleeds from her pussy. I don't think it's going to go smashingly, would be my guess. I think things probably not smashingly. Maybe not terribly, but not smashingly. <laughs> also, can somebody fill me in? I, I know people have said uh, Nick is not a—he's a, a non-practicing lawyer. Does that mean that he's—he's—he's um, he's a, he's a lawyer? Obviously, he graduated, but he doesn't have a law license to use right now to practice, or he needs to renew something. Because I'm curious, you can defend yourself even if you're not a lawyer. But when he told the court he was representing his wife and he wanted to talk to her before she went up for her hearing. If he's not actually a practicing lawyer, is that even legal? Did they fuck up? I mean, did they fuck up letting you talk to your wife if you're not a practicing lawyer? Because she can represent herself, you can represent herself, or yourself, but she can't have just some total fucking stranger that's not a lawyer do it. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm honestly asking this question. Like, how much worse could this get? Uh, but so we've got the sheriff's report and, you know, this redacted information shows that, you know, they, this is a basic report. But you might be asking, what are the charges? Well, I mean, here, here are Nick's charges. Uh, so we've got drug second degree possession, 25 grams or more of cocaine. And they said it was 26.67 grams. Uh, drug second degree uh, sales or possessed penalty is what they're, you know, the penalty for it is. Then we've got possession of uh, ammo or firearms, user of controlled substance. So it's an enhancement charge, really. Uh, it feels like one of those blue book laws they throw out there to try to nail people for shit to make sure they get nailed kind of thing. So you've got a, a felony and a gross misdemeanor. And then you've got uh, endangerment of child. You know, the kid was uh, present during a possession. So basically the kid knew there were drugs or there was a kid that maybe could have had access to drugs because you left them out, that kind of thing. Uh, those are Nick's charges. But let's look at his wife. Uh, so, again, drug, secondary possession, 25 grams or more. That makes sense. Uh, possession of a firearm or ammo. Uh, again, that makes sense. Both both of these make sense. They're both in the same bedroom. Why wouldn't they have the same charges? Oh, no, we've got the same child endangerment. Uh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute here. You see how Nick says, endangerment of a child present for sale or possession for both charge and penalty? But when you look at the wife, it says, negligent or endangerment of a child, neglect, and then under penalty, neglect child knowingly permit physical or sexual abuse. Let me take a minute to zoom in on that. Can we zoom in on that? Is that going to be possible? Of course it's going to. You'll see it. It's a very bottom line. Oh, OBS, don't crap out on me now. Now that we got to the dark part, Jesus. Uh, one second, Chad. Oh, YouTube's giving me giving me grief here. Hopefully, it didn't just shut out on me, because we actually got to got to something that's relatively dark. Okay, good. All right, we're still live. Sorry about that, Chad. We're good. What the fuck is this, Nick? I mean, is okay. Could this be like a typo? Uh, could they have accidentally fucked up and entered the wrong thing by mistake? I mean, that's possible, I, I, I suppose. 
up? Did somebody put up a false document? That's also possible, I suppose. But this is different, right? Like we saw Nix, that's just drug shit and gun shit. Why is this here? Why is this charge uh, neglect or endangerment, but physical or sexual abuse? I'm, I, I guess I'm really fucking confused. And it makes it somewhat ironic to me that you're engaged in civil litigation with Montegraff right now, accusing him of being a boy fucking pedophile, when the state is charging your wife with potentially physically or sexually abusing one of your kids. Or neglect, does that mean neglect that led to physical or sexual abuse? So my understanding of the, the sequence of events that went on were a mandatory reporter, which is somebody that is legally obligated to report what they believe is a dangerous situation for children, went to the police. Now, it's, uh, it's been rumored, there's been some documents that have circulated that it was their local priest or preacher or whatever. It was uh, the leader of the congregation at church had gone to the police and raised concerns about the kids. What exactly those concerns were, I don't know. Nobody seems to. But the police, for whatever reason, decided that it was good enough information to then take a week, I guess investigate, get a warrant, and show up at the house and battering ram down uh, the door uh, to charge them with guns and weapons charges, or, or weapons and drug charges, and then endangerment charges. But then specifically to have this for the wife doesn't fucking make sense to me. Somebody make this make sense to me. I mean, you know, I'm willing to hear Nick out on this. And I know that, you know, you've got a criminal case. Obviously, you can't say certain things. But what, is this a real charge? Is this a real thing? Is this a typo? Did somebody fuck up? Is this just the heading it gets put under because somebody entered a different kind of endangerment? Is this saying that they're accusing her of endangerment or that somebody else might have endangered them? And what exactly did the, the priest say? that would lead them to believe this. And I mean, monograph now could legally go out there and say some really horrendous shit about you and your wife, right? Because now he's got legal documents that say this shit. So what the fuck is going on? I mean, I don't think Nick Riccata is a bad man. I think he's made horrendous choices. And Nick doesn't strike me as the type of person that would hurt his kids. And I don't know anything about his wife, so I, I guess I can't say about that either. But I need somebody to explain this portion of it to me. I mean, is this bullshit? Is this fake? Is this a forgery? Because this is, this is what's out there. This is the police report. This is a charging document. I don't know, man. Now, Nick has had a response to this. He's come forward with uh, a response after he got out of jail. And again, you have to understand, one of the things in regards to this is, what is he going to say? Right? It's different than civil. It's criminal. So he obviously can't come out and say everything he wants to, but this is what he said. About the news. So, hey, obviously a lot has happened. I'm sorry for legal purposes. It must be reiterated that the sorry is the dis uh, for the disruption and is no way related to any pending legal matters. That said, please realize that no one has the full picture or story of anything. It's possible no one ever will. Nothing reported is accurate, and that's not their fault. I've seen so many supportive messages. Thank you for that. I'll still be doing stuff. I'm home now. Stay tuned for show announcements and stuff here on Locals. Nick. So let's unpack this. It's a portion of the stream where you get a little serious. Nick Riccata started his career as a humble family man that grew into wild success with an audience of 100,000 plus making buku bucks. He was beloved by many people, supported by an extraordinary amount of people, came out with a format uh, that was unique and interesting and got a lot of people their YouTube channels. A lot of law tubers blew up because of him. Was on the cusp of success and greatness with Netflix and with television and with the news. He was one of the people that really could have parlayed it into Something incredible. But that success allowed his vices to take control of him. 
And these legal proceedings, whether they're true or not, have given you a glimpse behind the curtain, so to speak. Because you could take away all of this. You could take away the warrant. You could say it was bullshit and fraudulent and it should never have been. He could find a great argument to get out of any legal repercussions. They could say that the mandatory reporter was misinformed. They could find something. But the fact of the matter is, you still now know that a mistress was living there. You still now know that they had ketamine and cocaine in their possession. That their fucking house was a disheveled mess. That there are guns all over the fucking place. That there's spent shell casings all over the fucking place. As you see him descend deeper and deeper into drinking. You've watched a man throw away his success because it, it's, this isn't even a midlife crisis. This isn't somebody wanting to sow their wild oats because they missed out on the opportunity. You had it all lined up for you, man. It was all there waiting for you to take it to the next level. You could have done amazing things. And instead you wanted to get high and get drunk and fuck sluts. And it's costing you everything. Your hubris and your ego about this are costing you. I'm not here to talk about the constitutionality of free speech and what you should be able to call Montegraph or not, but I would ask the question, was it worth it? Was it worth putting that financial burden and hardship over your own head and your families? I'm not here to talk about whether or not an open relationship in a marriage is a good or a bad thing, but was it worth it? seeing the destruction of Aaron and April's marriage and the effect that it's going to have on your marriage. I'm not here to talk about whether or not somebody should be a daily drinker or if they can be a functional alcoholic. But I'm going to ask you, was it worth it? Getting shit-faced drunk every night and watching your numbers diminish and your fan base shrink and your support go away? And I'm not going to sit here and talk about uh, whether or not it's right or wrong uh, to do illicit substances whether that's uh, shit that just got legalized in Minnesota like marijuana or completely illegal things like ketamine and cocaine. But again, I'll ask you, was it worth it? Having the police knock down your door and scare the shit out of your kids. Having your wife have to go through a booking proceeding. Having to be embarrassed in front of the internet. Was any of this shit worth it? You stood at the precipice of success and you threw it away. For what? momentary pleasure you get a little high you get a little drunk you get your cock sucked and your life falls apart you threw away the idyllic american dream for what five minutes of pleasure to all those people out there that want to get big in youtube this is a a good example of really what not to do You know, right now, VTubing is becoming a big thing. A lot of VTubers out there are killing it. And great, good on them. I love it. Uh, You know, people like Peppa and Kirsch and all of them. You know, go out and cultivate your fan base. Make your product. Build your brand. Make your money. And plan for your future. Don't get caught up in how famous or popular you are. Put your fucking money away. Buy a house. Buy a car. Because by the time you're curve is done in three or four or five years you'll be so far ahead of the game you'll be set on not having to worry about rent of not having to worry about mortgage not having to worry about a car or debt or bullshit you'll be able to live your life how you want to live it you'll have a chance at that idyllic american dream don't do what nick did don't let your ego get the better of you Don't give in to the momentary dick suckings and cocaine binges and alcohol benders because you're popular for the moment. Don't let those daydream fantasies of revenge against people that told you you'd never make it overtake your rationality. Don't do what this guy did. Otherwise, it's going to be you in the booking photo. And you don't want that. You don't want to be the mugshot. Nobody does. You don't want to be Nick Ricada with a black eye and people asking, why is his wife getting charged for physical abuse of the children? Why is a woman living in his house? Why is he so drunk? Why were there drugs found? Why were there guns found? Do you think this is something that's easily repaired, Nick, or anybody watching this? 
It's not. The damage that's been done from this week alone will have repercussions throughout the rest of your life. It will be uh, the underpinning of any argument you and your wife have about who's responsible for it and how badly things got fucked up. Uh, It will affect your relationship with your homeschooling group and your church and your neighborhood and your neighbors because you'll be the guy whose mugshot they saw and they'll hear all these fucking stories and whether or not they're true or how true they are or how factually accurate they are or how far off the mark they are, they'll still know they found a bunch of coke and ketamine and fucking guns. They'll still know some chick you were banging was living there. And they'll ask themselves, what kind of neighbor is this guy? And how fucking reliable is he? I just don't get it. I don't know what happened, man. You really were one of the people that had the best chance, Nick. You really were. You really had the best chance of turning it into something amazing. And just, it. I don't know why you've thrown it away. And I don't understand that you, I can't comprehend why you've thrown it away for so little. You traded it in for so little. You took something that had the potential to to grant you an amazing life and you pissed it away for nothing. And, you know, that's what makes me lean towards there really being a problem with alcohol or drugs. Because no rational person that's sober would do that. But an addict would. They wouldn't be able to weigh the pros and cons, the benefits and the penalties. They'd be living in the now. They'd care about that a dopamine hit more than anything else. This isn't even me moral fagging. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to get preachy with you. I'm genuinely fucking confused. I know you've got a lot of people you talk to. You've got friends and different associates in real life and online. None of them? None of them grabbed you by the arm and said stop? Or the ones that did, did you pay them no heed? You never woke up one morning hung over feeling like shit with a black eye like you're in your mug or mugshot and say I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want my life to be this. I can do better than this. You had so much going for you. You know, your kids would have grown up and said, that's my dad on television. That guy is my dad and he's on TV because he's smart and he's successful and he's motivated and people fucking love the shit that he does. That's where you were. They would have been going to school and bragging. Now what the fuck are they going to say? Oh yeah, it's my dad in the mugshot. Why would you throw it away, man? Why would you piss that away? I just don't get it. I really don't. (sighs) Few people are offered uh, the opportunity to have that kind of success. And you really were smart in how you did it. I, I, I try not to take that away from you, especially when I talked about it before. A lot of people say, oh, people have done legal shit on the internet before. They've done law tube stuff before. They have. But that was your idea. The way you did it, the format, the flow of it, the feel of it. That was you, man. That was your creative energy behind it. That was your chance to brand it and capitalize on it and fucking be a rising star with it. And you chose to throw it away. And I just don't fucking understand it. I just don't get it. You know, I hope, um, I I hope there's not abuse shit going on with the kids. I hope that the fucking mandatory reporter brought up concerns that were just related to drug use. I hope there's not crazy shit that's going to come out, man. Because I don't know if I can take it. I really don't. Because you don't strike me as a piece of shit, Nick. You don't. You don't strike me as a bad person. You never have. And it would be heartbreaking if that uh, turns out to be false. That would fuck me up. If it was Ethan Ralph or some other piece of shit on the internet, I wouldn't be surprised, but I would with you. Maybe I just bought hook, line, and sinker the bullshit at the beginning. You know, the humble family man. I don't know. But that's who I saw you as being, you know, that's who I thought you really were. And I still hope that you really are. But, um, like I said at the beginning, you can't tell a alcoholic or a drug addict 
um, to fix themselves because they won't. Uh, they have to decide to do it. And no matter what you think rock bottom is, uh, they have to decide what it is. For some people, rock bottom is a mild inconvenience. It's running out of money when they need it, or it's being in a bit of an uncomfortable situation. For other people, it's being completely homeless and covered in shit until it's rock bottom. I don't know what yours is. One would hope this is. So, I don't know. It's depressing. It's just depressing. It's depressing to see potential fall apart like that. And to see something that seems so good, at least on the outside, crumble apart. You're such an idiot, man. You're such a fucking idiot. I wish you the best, Nick. I do. I hope you get through it. I hope you fix yourself. I hope uh, you're... I hope you can fix this. Because it would be sad to see a good family torn apart over shit like this. And... It's shit that's going to live with your family, um, with your kids and your wife, and it's <laughs> it's not going to go away, but it is something you could repair if you put the effort into it, and I don't know if you'll ever see the same success you saw on YouTube again, but you could still climb back, and you could still have a happy life. You could still have that ideal life that most people seem to strive for. And I just hope that you're not stupid enough to not try. I hope that you're smart enough to understand uh, that you could get it if you really put in the effort. I don't know what started this all. I don't know why you decided to go down the path that you did. Uh, But I think, based on my interactions with you, uh, that you're a better man than that. uh, And that you could still fix it. I know it's easy for a lot of people to uh, shit on you and just do it unrepentantly, and that's fine. I'm not here to judge. Everybody's got their own opinion. But I can't reconcile what you are now uh, with what I was introduced to. And I hope that there's still a piece of that in you and that that piece wins out. And that there aren't more mugshots. Rather, uh, Christmas cards from the family than mugshots, Nick, is what you should be aiming for. So, best of luck. I, re- I really hope there's not kid shit involved in this. Um, and I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I don't have, like, a, a eloquent ender for you. Uh, that was just, that was a, a real ender for you. An honest opinion from a hat salesman. So we went for four hours on a depressing subject at the end there. Um, You know, it was supposed to be, like I said, a a Tomlinson Larson stream. We're going to have some laughs talking about pepperonis and all that shit. And instead we watched the downfall of a guy that that really had it all and threw it away. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. We'll see where the story goes. We'll see what the, the next chapter holds. Chat. As for the humble uh, hat salesman whose side feels like it's going to fucking explode here, I will read a few more of the Super Chats from Cash App and from Ko-Fi as best I can. If I miss yours, I apologize, but I usually don't do very long streams, and we've been going for about four hours now. And that's about my limit. I told you it'd be a bit of a longer stream. It was. I tried to make my way through it as best I could. <sighs> Look at Jim Bean. Oh, oh, my God. Counselor Jim Bean, such a nice guy. Yeah, don't forget, I'm also selling merch based on his misery. (laughs) Oh, I'm such a cunt. Remember, medicare.myshopify.com, not practicing merchandise. Get yourself a hat, a glass, a shirt, and a puzzle piece, and then buy a poster as well. Because I am an asshole, too. We're all just pieces of shit, just by varying degrees. Welcome welcome to the adult life. (laughs) 
uh, the best you can do is try to be the smallest piece of shit that you can be. That's what you're aiming for. <laughs>